Wildcats roar into Lawrence with a six-game winning streak safely tucked in their den. And the Jayhawks, well, they're soaring with one of the most potent offenses in the country. A three-and-one record in their nest. KU K-State next on Prime. to the University of Kansas in Lawrence for the Big 8 Game of the Week. Today, from Memorial Stadium, the Kansas Jayhawks host their cross-state rival, the Wildcats of Kansas State. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Armstrong. And to give you some perspective on this game and how far these teams have come, 1988 was the first year of Glenn Mathan's career here at Kansas. In that year, KU beat K-State. It was the only win for KU. K-State went winless that year. And Glenn Mason remembers that game well. Is that 1988 that uh, Kansas football, I mean the state of this uh, football, uh, was uh, virtually dead. Uh, this game was uh, a mockery. Uh, I became very upset in 1988 because of a lot of our local media people, uh, radio people, were calling this the toilet bowl. And I don't know how many people were here then because we opened the gates and let anybody free and we probably still only had 20, 25,000 people. Now you can't get a ticket. No, you certainly can't get a ticket unless you're a scalper out there <laughs> trying to find something. Working alongside Jim Ryan, the former Bronco. And Jim, when you were with Denver, you had all those great rivalries with the Raiders and the Chiefs. Oh. What's it like from the players' perspective? It's great. I tell you, the fire burns hotter. The passion is more intense. I mean, you know that you have to go out and be ready to play this game. What it is, it's a license to be nasty, you know, <laughs> to get angry. You know, because you're playing against a team that you have a special relationship with. You know, every guy wants to play in a championship game and with a rivalry like this that's exactly what you're doing you're mm. playing for a championship for the title of a league in which only these two teams are members and this the championship of the state of kansas and that governor's cup duke fry has been coming to these games for years duke's down there on the sidelines with us today and duke i'll bet it's great for you to see all those extra stands in place well dave you mentioned 1988 well 1988 was the last time that these stands were here in the south end zone the jayhawks haven't needed them because they haven't been filling the stands until this year but this game is a sellout the first since 1982 it could be the biggest crowd for a kuk state game since 1973 when the Jayhawks came from behind in the last minutes of play to beat Kansas State. The bad news is for all those fans who sit up on the hill and like to watch the ball game, well, these stands on the south side block their view so they don't see much of the ball game. They just have a nice party in the afternoon. And they will have that party throwing the Frisbee. They won't get to see the action, though, and there should be plenty of that. Jim, what do you see as the keys for Kansas State today? Kansas State has to do a few things. And number one, both coaches agree that upfront play is going to be the most important thing. And their offensive line must play well. Open holes for Eric Gallon, protect Smart Gesso. The Wildcats have any measure of success. Also, they got to slow down Chip Hillary. He's their biggest concern and KU's biggest weapon right now, not only as a passer, but as a runner. And they've got to keep Chip from breaking through for big runs on the quarterback draws and bootlegs and those type of things. And finally, Dave, they need to turn the ball over what? quite a bit. What? No, I'm serious. They need to turn the ball over quite a bit because <laughs> last year they turned it over six times and won the ball game. So I guess that's how they'd be successful. <laughs> Good strategy, I guess. How about Kansas? Kansas has a few things they need to do. Well, number one, is stretch the KSU defense. Hillary's strength may, may not be throwing the long ball, but they have to give that threat so that they can get the Wildcats from just crowding the line of scrimmage like the uh, Cal Bears did, and that, that'll open things up for KU. Hillary must play well. As you know, Dave, he has not played extremely well in the last two games between these two, two, two clubs, and he needs to have a good game for them to be successful, and they have to control the Wildcats big play with Gerald Benton, Andre Coleman, Mitch running. Those are guys that can get deep. They make big plays and KSU or KU has to stop them from doing so. All right, Jim, we don't know who's going to win, but we should know that it will be close. Four of the last five years, this game has been decided by five points or less. We expect another one like that. And it's a beautiful Saturday here in Lawrence. The 1992 Big 8 College Football on Prime Network is brought to you by Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. We'll be back with a kickoff of today's game after these messages.
Oldsmobile redefines quality. Here's proof. Call 1-800-THE-TEST to get independent test results from a 100,000-mile real-world test of the new Oldsmobile Achieva against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry. Learn how Achieva outperformed Accord and Camry in total cost, which includes maintenance, repair, and operating costs. You'll even get a free video documenting the test. Achieva, quality redefined from the company that went far enough to prove it. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Hi, I'm Jack LaLanne, and I've developed a better way to get in shape. It's my new Jack LaLanne stepper, and it's guaranteed to strengthen firm and tone your body into shape faster than ever. It's sensational. Look, my stepper has been designed to target the muscles in your hips and buttocks, thighs and calves, so every step is more effective. Burn body fat faster, lose calories, and develop firm, shapely muscles with one incredible exercise machine. Best of all, my stepper is so simple to use. Simply adjust the dial to your fitness level. Increase the stair height for an intense workout. Get the maximum workout in minimum time. Now through Telebrain. You can own the Jack Lane Stepper for only three easy payments of $29.95. And if you order now, I'll also include this special instructional video that's a $20 value absolutely free. You know, there is a better way. The Jack Lane Stepper. Call 1-800-522-5333. Three payments of $29.95 or send $89.85 plus $9.95 shipping. Sorry, no CODs accepted. Before. Touring. Welcome back to Lawrence, Kansas. They say winning isn't everything, but it sure beats an empty stadium. And this place is packed here today. The coaches for these teams from Kansas State in his fourth year, Bill Snyder, who likes to defer a lot of the attention to his players and his assistants, but he has done a marvelous job at KSU. Speaking of marvelous jobs, Glenn Mason now in his fifth year, he has turned this program around. This is the 90th meeting between these two schools. Kansas has a decided edge in the series and here in Lawrence. In fact, the last time KSU won here in Lawrence was 1969. That was the first year they played for the Governor's Cup. The weather couldn't be more perfect. A cool front went through earlier this week and it is absolutely gorgeous today. The trees are starting to turn, the temperature of 64 degrees, and we have a perfect day for college football. And what a great game to be broadcasting. It's Kansas and Kansas State, and Warren Clawson to kick off for the Wildcats. Clawson boots it deep. White takes it one yard deep in the end zone. Sprawls ahead to the 20-yard line, but that's about it. The quarterback for the Kansas Jayhawks in his senior campaign, Chip Hillary. Boy, Dave, what a guy, what an athlete this guy is. Great athlete, runs so well. What's unusual about the way he runs is that he gets out of the pocket, runs on bootlegs, draws, and things like that. It's not just the option. They'll run it a few times this game, though. Hillary, a guy who last year was a little bit in the doghouse of Glenn Mason, but he's turned that around, and he has been terrific in the three-and-one start for KU this year. First and ten from the 20-yard line for the Jayhawks. Hillary to throw on first down. Wide open is Rodney Harris. Not much gain. Good defensive coverage by Kit Rawlings. Kansas will be looking to try to get the ball to Matt Gay, who has great speed. He's their leading receiver, 12 catches. But look out for the trick plays with Matt Gay. He's thrown two touchdowns already this year. Up front, the senior leader of that offensive line for KU is Keith Lonaker. It's a big line. Kansas will look to get their tough yards behind Lonaker. Second down, seven yards to go. The ball at the 23. And the give is to Cousins. Big hole. He gets it up to the 30-yard line. Looks like a first down for Kansas. Defensively up front for Kansas State. A great front line. And the addition of Jeff Stimino has really solidified things. He's a converted pullback. We might see him run the ball in short yardage situations. He's like the fridge, isn't he? And Brooks Barta in his senior campaign. You think this guy's a leader? He's been a co-captain since his sophomore year. He is terrific. And Jamie Mendez already has five interceptions this year. Now from the shotgun, Hillary. He's 
got his receiver, popped loose, fumble, and Kansas State's got it. Douglas had it, and then it was popped loose. And Brent Venables fell on the football, and Kansas State has the first break of the game. Just a crossing pattern. The tight end goes one way, the back comes the other way. This ball might have been thrown behind Douglas a little bit. What a hit put on by number eight, C.J. Masters for the Wildcats. See Hillary dropping back. See the tight end is kind of clearing out. He picks off Venables, as a matter of fact. But no, the ball's thrown all right. Douglas makes a good catch, just didn't put it away. And boy, C.J. Masters got his helmet right where he needed it on the football. Boy, did he ever. The first turnover of the game. And let's see what happens. Well, Eric Gallon goes nowhere. Gallon ran out of gas on that one because Kansas was all over him. Dana Stubblefield and Kyle Moore sandwich him. The junior quarterback, an athletic one, Jason yeah. Smargesso. He's similar to Hillary, as a matter of fact. He's got four rushing touchdowns already. He'll get out of the pocket, and I've throw, seen him throw the ball off his back foot, off balance quite well. Second down, 13 yards to go now. The loss of three to Gallon, who is the lone setback for KSU. They have a great field position at the 38 of KU. Smargesso, it's picked off. Robert Vaughn has it. Tripped up at the 42. Tripped up by the quarterback, Jason Smargesso. Wow, what a start. <laughs> well, Kansas State say, is doing what we said they had to do, turn the ball over to be successful. We've said that tongue-in-cheek, certainly, but <laughs> already there's been two turnovers in this ball game. Just a, a, a drop back. He just backpedals out of there, and uh, Kansas in a zone. They're trying to get behind the corner, back in front of the safety, but Vaughn didn't bite. He stayed back there with his receiver, was able to pick it off, makes a nice run, although he gets all his yardage going east and west. Well, Jim, we'll see if the strategy pays off for Kansas State. <laughs> we say that, of course, tongue-in-cheek. I don't want any of you going away from this thinking, well, those guys are really something. With Prime, they, they keep wanting Kansas State to turn it over. Last year, of course, Kansas State turned it over six times. Somehow they won that game. Well, Chip Hillary comes back on the attack again now. Pretty much where they left off. Sure, they're, they're just where they were when they had the uh, turnover, the fumble. At the 42, Gay goes in motion. And the give is to Douglas. Busts across the left side, across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Venables uh, stops him right there. Brent Venables, a senior now, one of eight seniors out of 11 defensive starters for Kansas State. You see what Kansas is doing. They're attacking kind of the perimeters, not outside, not real wide, not between the tackles, but right over the tight end is, a, is where they think that they can gain some yardage against this KSU defense. Gain of four, it's second and six. The draw play. Wide open is White on the draw across midfield. Finally tripped up by Randolph. But inside KSU territory at the 46-yard line, they'll move the chains. Kansas has uh, had such good numbers offensively, but they don't get big bites. They kind of get small bites of yardage as you see uh, the linebacker Barta being knocked down, and that uh, affords White to get through and some good yardage. And Jim, what a balanced attack it is for KU. 219 yards average on the ground, 225 through the air. They run the ball. They've run it 192 times and only passed it 109, so they are running the ball a lot better, but their yardage is even. On the draw, the quarterback keeper, Hillary, picks up about six yards on first down. Daryl Harbert stops in there. Hillary likes to call his own number often. He has rushed for 250-plus yards this year. As soon as I was talking about a little bit earlier, Hillary gets his yards running in an unusual way. A lot of quarterback draws, rollouts, and that type of thing. And, and Pat Golden Rule doesn't want Hillary to take that many hits, but uh, they're going to call him because Hillary can run the football. He's the leading rusher as Mason checks out the action. And the give is to White. Big hole on the right side. Should be another first down near the 35-yard line. Finally brought down by C.J. Masters. Masters the strong safety, but KU is rolling on the ground. They're doing it up front. Good blocking that time to tight end. Dwayne Chandler just drove his man about five yards off the line of scrimmage. And that's where I say they're going to try to attack is those perimeter areas behind the tackles and the tight ends. There you see one of the defensive coordinators for Kansas State, Jim Levitt. The other, Bob Stoops, is up in the booth. Hillary straight back to throw, looking long distance, and it is overthrown. 
Pass intended for Rodney Harrison. Good coverage from Kit Rawlings. Kansas does believe that the corners for Kansas State, Dave, are a little bit vulnerable. Maybe not as uh, as talented as some other corners, and they want to go deep and throw against those corners, but that time covered very well. Yeah, you were talking about Golden Pat Rule, the offensive coordinator for Kansas. He's been with Mason every step of the way. Good man spent about a half an hour with him yesterday. Very willing to talk about the, the things that his Kansas Jayhawks can and can't do. Second and ten. Hillary with some pressure tries to dump it across, and what a catch by Chandler, and it's knocked loose. Who's got it? Kansas State says they do. And they do. The second turnover for Kansas. And that one looked like a replay of the first. A catch and then a fumble. We'll look and see if he has his ball. I'm not so sure that he had possession before he was hit and fumbled the ball. you got to have possession before it can be a fumble. You see Dwayne Chandler going up making a tremendous play. I don't think he had that football. I think it was still coming out when he was hit. Looked like Barta hit him. Let's see if he has it. There's 44 Barta closing strong. Uh, I don't know. Well, Barta knocked it Chandler's body and actually gave him possession of the ball, possibly. But either way, it's a Wildcats ball. Kansas State with another break, and they get it to Eric Gallen. Minimal yardage. Good coverage by Kansas defense. He gets it up to the 25-yard line and out of bounds. Boy, let's take a breath and reset the offense for Kansas State. What a wild beginning. Eric Gallon, the leading rusher in the Big A. We'll be talking about him a whole lot in this game. He's going to carry the ball quite a bit. We'll also mention Benton and Coleman, a couple of speedsters on the outside. Quentin Newyer, maybe the best center, not only in the Big A, but one of the best in the He's country. He's an NFL prospect, and his experience, he's been starting for three years. Second down, eight yards to go for K-State at their own 25-yard line. Defensive play from Steve Harvey. Harvey, who has been injured some, came in and made a tremendous play. Let's take a look at the upfront guys for Kansas. Dana Stubblefield. There he is, a senior now, and man, is he good. Outland Trophy candidate. And uh, I was talking to some pro scouts yesterday. They said this guy is for real. He is a player. Hassan Bailey, a converted cornerback. Quick though. Yeah, so 205 say. pounds, but might be the fastest linebacker in the Big Eight. And Bowen has picked off three so far this year. Good secondary from KU. They'll be tested by the speedy receivers of Kansas State. This a third and 11 play. Margesso had time and hit a tuck it under as he was hit from behind. Guy Howard sacks Smargesso. Bill McCartney said that Kansas has the best front line in the Big Eight. When you make plays like this, he's proving Bill McCartney correct. You just see Guy Howard coming from the right of your screen. He beats the left tackle, Barrett Brooks. It's in and makes the sack on Smart Gesso. Sean Snyder, the coach's son, to punt it away. A great one. Had some pressure, but boy, does he get off a boomer. Bowen has to trace his steps all the way back to his 25. And not much room to run. Tremendous kick off the foot of Sean Snyder, a 55-yarder. Snyder, the coach's son, he's not playing because his dad's the coach. He's playing because he's great. 9.42 left to go here in the first quarter. We're still scoreless. Hey, watch out. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Are nicks and scratches destroying your car's finish? Introducing Color Smart, the color coordinated polish that makes nicks and scratches disappear. Look, to shine your shoes, you choose matching color polish. Color Smart works the same way. Just choose the color that matches your car. Not a car key. Use Color Smart White and those scratches disappear. Color Smart brings back any car's shine. Amazing. Don't spend hundreds on a new paint job. Now you can order Color Smart, the intelligent car polish, for only $19.95. Order now and we'll double the size of your bottle at incredible 16 ounces. But wait, call within the next 10 minutes and we'll also include this triple bonus. Restore it, clear glass, and new car scent. A $20 value free. Order your Color Smart today. Have your credit card ready and call 1-800-522-5333 or send check or money order to the address on your screen. For faster delivery, call 1-800-522-5333. 
Register to win four tickets to the Florida Georgia game, courtesy of the Olive Garden Italian Restaurant and Sunshine Network. Make plans now to attend the game and your very own Olive Garden tailgate party at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, October 31st. Enter at one of the three Jacksonville area Olive Garden Italian Restaurants or send a postcard to Olive Garden Sports Talk Live, care of Sunshine Network, Orlando, Florida. Don't wait. Enter now at one of three Jacksonville area Olive Garden Restaurants where all the best of Italy is yours. Go Gators! How about them dogs? Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. This place built in 1921. The first game ever was played between Kansas and Kansas State in 1921. And KU won 21 to 7 before 5,160 fans. They'll have slightly more than that here today. A sellout crowd anticipated. And if you count the people up on Mount Oriad, there are probably over 65,000 fans in attendance. Maurice Douglas is sandwiched. Douglas hit hard up front by Simino, the guy that uh, spent some time at Arizona State and at Utah, and now here he is at Kansas State. There you see the sellout, the first since 82, and look at all the people up on the hill, and with those stands they have added, those stands you see right in front of you now are not normally there. They had to add those for this game. So the crowd had to move up the hill a little bit further to see the action. Second down, eight yards to go. On the option, here comes Hillary. Tucks it under and falls down at the 39-yard line. Pat Rule said that Kansas wanted to run a little bit more option in this game, Dave, because against California, they didn't have very much success running the ball except for Hillary, but it wasn't on the option. It was getting out on the draws and rollouts and bootlegs. They thought that they could attack Kansas running a little bit of option. Their front seven so good, but they like to stack inside and uh, really do a good job stopping the inside runs. Levin has watched his defense shut out two of their last five opponents. Third down, three yards to go for KU. Looked like a busted play. Hillary was looking to pitch the ball, tucked it under, and got just across the 41. It will be shy of the first down by a couple, but we have a penalty flag down. Mason wants to know what the call is all about. Might be illegal motion or 12 men on the field. I'm not sure. Mason was very frank with us yesterday, Jim, saying that it was his fault they lost the Kansas State he took all the responsibility saying when they had it fourth and one at the seven in the fourth quarter that he probably should have kicked the field goal and forced Kansas State to score twice there's a few Kansas along a few Kansas fans that agree with him too Mason said that's one time I wished I hadn't gambled he's a gambling type yeah. and he said oh and he's right now he's a mad type that penalty goes against Kansas obviously Kansas State declines the penalty and it brings up fourth down and brings the punting unit out Mason still beside I, himself I think he's mad because it looked like one of the wide receivers for Kansas was running off the field and what he's saying is hey he was just in motion that's all he was doing and I you see his average he and Snyder the best punters in the Big Eight conference I who grew up in Germany and he came to this country when he was in high school and he booms one flag is down as Gerald Benton takes it at his own five brings up to the 25 but a flag goes down and a 48 yard punt off the foot of Dan Eichloff he may be the best one two punch as far as a kicker in the conference both the field goals kickoffs punts he does it all he has a 61 yarder already to his mm. credit this season mm. we were talking the other day w would a kicker come out early to the NFL if he did <laughs> Eichloff only a junior would be successful in the NFL Bill Snyder everything you read about him talks about organization class the way he is disciplined we talked to him quite at length about that yesterday and, and he even stopped to feel the field to see what it was like and so many things he says I know this is a tough game for our players to prepare for because it's so emotional we hope that doesn't get in the way of our preparation and so far it hasn't I I call him the, the Lazarus program KSU because he raised it from the dead so. <laughs> Boy, did he ever <laughs> yeah, and they were dead a long time too Allen hit immediately by Gilbert Brown who's playing again after injuring his knee against Tulsa Gilbert Brown one of the first big recruits in Mason's career and he is big mm. he's big as big as the fridge 305 pounds but he can move look at him throw people out of the way he's double teamed. he splits the double team and comes in and makes a play behind the line of scrimmage now that's playing football 
And Gallon has run out of gas in this game. <laughs> Gallon, who normally rushes 105 yards a game, three carries minus six yards so far today. Second down 11 now. This Kansas defense has been stingy. Stingier still. Smargesso goes nowhere. Malmolongo was in there along with Larry Thiel. Larry Thiel out of uh, Cherry Creek High School in Colorado. He just splits it up the middle, throws the lineman out of the way. These Kansas State players on defense are fired up. They're throwing people out of the way. That Cherry Creek High School rings a bell with Kansas fans. It should. It's the same high school as a fellow by the name of Mark Rendell. was a tremendous center here for KU for many years. Third down, 12 yards to go. Smart Gesso goes down. Trips over his own player. And it's three and out for KSU. Well, you can't blame the turf or anything. I think he just slipped and fell down. And Smart Gesso is certainly not the way he wanted to start things out. As one interception and then on a key third down play just falls down. Well, Snyder back in his own end zone with Bowen waiting for it at the 50. Snyder with another good punt. Backs Bowen up to the zone 45. But room to run. Cross midfield. Still looking for room. Still on his feet. Down to the 41-yard line. Margesso is uh, right now getting some discipline from his coach. Snyder, who makes... Many of the offensive calls on the Kansas State sideline has watched his team turn it three and out. And we're in the first quarter with 5.45 to go and still no score. We've had three turnovers, two by Kansas, one by Kansas State. From the shotgun. Hillary wide open is his receiver. Pass is caught by Maurice Douglas, and he is rolled out of bounds at the 32. I haven't seen Chip Hillary go from the shotgun very much, especially on first down. A little bit unusual. They're throwing something new at Kansas State. And uh, with Kansas State in their normal defense, uh, and K KU spreading them out a little bit, Chip Hillary taking advantage of what KSU is giving, and that's the flat areas for an, an easy completion. So Mason in. Rule. They feel like last year's loss to Kansas State 16 12 cost them a bowl game. You were saying earlier about Mason that uh, he felt like he cost them that win last year with his gambling style. That's why I'm talking to him yesterday. He feels like he owes his team and owes his fans one. He wants this game in a serious way. Well, he said if we kick the field goal, then we force them to score two touchdowns. By not kicking the field goal, they can score a field goal and and a touchdown. He said, I was almost relieved in a way when they scored that second touchdown because then I knew we needed those points. Chip Hillary checking off here. We'll see what they go to. First and 10 from the 30 of KSU. Hillary. What a catch. How in the world did Gay hang on to that with Randolph all over it? Can't fault the coverage of Thomas Randolph. No, and Chip Hillary checking off on that play, and he goes to the inside hook by Matt Gay. He looks like he's well covered. Hillary, a little stutter step, threads the needle. Great pass. Excellent catch. All the way down to the 19-yard line goes Kansas. That's their deepest penetration. Hillary on the naked bootleg. Read well, though, by Kansas State. And again, it's Randolph who comes up from his cornerback position to make the stop. Now, that's a play that Kansas had great success against California with. As a matter of fact, that's the play that Hillary scored on in the second quarter against Cal last Thursday night, or actually a week and a half ago. And Pat Rule tells me that he's looking to throw, but he's pressing the corner. See, to me, he looks like he's got that tuck that he's running all the way. It doesn't look like he has any ideas of throwing the football. And all the way down to the 10-yard line goes George White. Kansas doesn't have what you would call a dominant running back. They do it by committee with Douglas and White and Cousins and Chaka Johnson and LT Levine. Yeah, they, they, they get short chunks of yardage, methodically go down the field and score touchdowns. And it's been successful for them. And, you know, they spread the ball out before this season. 
Glenn Mason wanted to do things, spread the ball out to different receivers in that. After this play, we'll tell you how they've done that. Third and one at the nine. And the give is to Chris Powell. Powell gets it down to around the eight-yard line. That first down, just because Kansas offensive line is dominating Kansas State's defensive line, just getting a push, enough to get the first down. That was Monty Cousins, not Powell. 33, not 32. We'll give the credit to Cousins on the first down. We're talking about spreading the ball out, get a lot of people involved. Nine different players have carried the ball. Ten have caught passes. Eleven different players have scored for the Jayhawks. First and goal from the seven. Douglas, touchdown! Chip Hillary's mom loves it. It's 6-0 KU. Kansas just attacking that side. Over the tight end, over the tackle, not too much right over the center. Kansas State, or Kansas State got blown out, I would say, on that play by the Kansas offensive line. Eichloff for the point after, that's automatic. He's hit 42 straight now, 22 of those this year. And Kansas gets on the board first, a seven-yard touchdown run from Maurice Douglas. Kansas going to the one back, and you just see they get blocking. Venables had a chance to stop him on the three-yard line, but he just arm tackles him. He's got to get his head in there and stop him rather than just uh, arm tackling. See how Douglas gets a, about four yards, three yards after they make contact with him. Kansas State has won six in a row. This is the first time they've trailed. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. The way to not win in tennis is to think too much about your opponent. Because in tennis, you don't just play the opponent. You've got to play the ball. It's how you play the ball that determines whether your shot is in or out. Whether the point is won or lost. Play the ball better than your opponent, and you'll play winning tennis. Now, you can play the ball and win with this double offer from Tennis Magazine. You'll receive a free half-hour video by Tennis Magazine instruction editor Vic Braden, plus a full year, 12 issues of Tennis Magazine. Call this number now and change the way you play tennis. What a combination. The How to Play Winning Tennis with Vic Braden video, plus the magazine that brings more instruction to more tennis players than any other. Call 800-652-2112 for a full year of Tennis Magazine, plus this free video, just $13.77. Call 800-652-2112 now. Tough Turf Saturday just got tougher as Houston takes their best shot at Baylor and talented trigger man J.J. Joe. Or Vanderbilt Battles Georgia, live Saturday on Sunshine Network. Welcome back to a happy Memorial Stadium in Lawrence. Kansas has taken the early lead on Kansas State. See the time remaining in the first quarter. Kansas leading 7-0 on the strength of that Maurice Douglas seven-yard touchdown run a moment ago. Now Eichloff to kick off. Andre Coleman and Gerald Benton back deep. It comes to Coleman on the seven. Tremendous speed. Watch out. Coleman who scored the winning touchdown against Kansas a year ago. He takes it out of bounds to the 35-yard line. So a uh, great field position for Kansas State. Now you see the scoring drive for KU. 41 yards, 2 minutes, 30 seconds. They had forced Kansas State to punt it out of their own end zone. Great field position. And Douglas takes it in from the 7. Let's get out on the field to Duke Fry. Thank you, Dave. Uh, one thing to note on the last series, Chip Hillary been rubbing his back, the right side, right around the hip area. He was doing it the last couple of happened may have happened all right we'll watch that closely smart Jesso running for his life will not escape Kyle Moore boy this Jayhawk defensive front is really putting some pressure on and I'll tell you what I think that was going to be is a little shovel pass they wanted to get uh, Andre Coleman watch Coleman come right behind the line of scrimmage after the play action pass see him they wanted to shovel pass right right to him but number nine 39 Don Davis is in the way and also uh, Chris Mamalunga. 
Malmalonga, 72. He really blew off that line. That's what's amazing about these defensive linemen for Kansas. Are so big, yet so quick. 6'3", 290 for Malmalonga. He moved like a running back. And a loss of five at second and 15. Look at the surge again, but here comes Gallon. Penalty flag is down, and Gallon looked like he had room to run, and boy, was that hole sealed in a hurry at the 32-yard line. Steve Harvey came up and made the hit. And a holding call. Kansas State trying to do whatever they can to keep out that defensive front. You're right, though. They had the corner there, but it closed very quickly. Brian Reese, the tight end on that side, didn't hold his block long enough. He allowed Steve Harvey to break through. If uh, he doesn't make the play, Gallon had some room. <laughs> Holding. Offense. Penalty declined. Third down. John Lorry, our referee for today. Kansas wanting that ball back in a hurry. Only a gain of two, so they'll take the down, refuse the penalty, and bring up third and 13. And why not? Kansas playing so well defensively. They don't need the yardage. They want the ball back on downs. Smargesso said our success will ride on the shoulders of the offensive line. Said that in the open so far, the offensive line for Kansas State has not been getting the job done. Jim, that was one of your keys to Kansas State victory today. And a timeout taken by Smart Gesso. We'll take it with them. 151 to go in the first quarter. Kansas State's offense is going nowhere. July 1992. Oldsmobile goes further than any other car company to redefine quality. Further than the lab. Further than the test track, the Oldsmobile Achieva went 100,000 miles against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry in a real-world test. Independent test results prove Achieva outperformed Accord and Camry in total cost, which includes maintenance, repair, and operating costs. Achieva, quality redefined. From the company that went far enough to prove it. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. The 1991 Miami Hurricanes fought their way to an undefeated season. Now, here's your chance to relive all the Canes classic games in the home video that chronicles their march to college football's national championship. Miami Hurricane Football 1991, King of the Hill, takes you from the home opener against Houston to the Orange Bowl victory against Nebraska. You'll see it all. King of the Hill can be yours for only $19.95 plus shipping and handling. To order, call 1-800-526-8927 today. All major credit cards accepted. Listen up, Miami Dolphin fan. It's time to air it out with your favorite gridiron heroes every Monday night on the Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine. Give them a call and see the game from their eyes. We'll look back on last week's battle in the trenches and look forward to this week's war. Air it out with the pros who know on the Miami Dolphins Monday Night Magazine. Brought to you in part by Great Western Bank and Subaru. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium here in Lawrence. And so far, this sellout crowd is uh, seeing what they want to see, at least most of them. There are about 5,000 that made the way from Manhattan. And uh, you see the Big 8. This is the Big 8 opener for these two schools with 3-0 and and 3-1 and records. The second consecutive year, Jim, that these teams have started 3-0 and on the year. The last time they did that, opening both teams opening 3-0, 1914-1915. Oh, you were just a youngster then, weren't you? <laughs> yeah. My goodness. Smart Gesso. Doing a good job dancing out of there. Room to run now outside. And finally goes down at the 39-yard line, about six yards shy of the first down. Charlie Bowen came up and licked him right there. Smart Gesso just not getting the time to find receivers. They were trying to run deep routes, and they had to with 13 yards to go for the first down. But Smart Gesso has to wait till his receivers clear and try to get open before he can throw the football. But by that time, he's got Kansas players right in his face. Snyder to punt for the third time today. And back deep to get it, Charlie Bowen. And a whistle, a flag is thrown. Dead ball, Dead ball, illegal procedure, offense, five-yard penalty. Yeah, back him up five more. See, Bill Schneider, he, I'm sure he hates things like that. Mistakes mm. are what really kill a football team. Bill Schneider, and he is uh, 
a man who pays attention to detail. I said when they called said. him about detail, they said mm -hmm. when they called him for the job, they called him when he was an assistant at Iowa, and he said, well, let me call you back at 8 o'clock tonight. They said you could have set your clock. He dialed that phone right at 8 o'clock. And this time, Snyder does not get off a good punt. That's Sean Snyder. And Bowen takes it, but good coverage by Kansas State, and Kansas will restart their offense at the 30-yard line. With 57 seconds to go here in the opening quarter, Hillary goes back on the attack. This is an offense that has averaged 43.5 points a game so far this year. At one time, the leading offense in the country after their opening wins over Oregon State and Ball State. And there you see his mom, Chip Hillary's mom, who we'll try to get a, uh, have Duke Fry go over and get a word with her later on. She comes in. Big hole for Douglas, all the way up to the 45 yard line. I think what we're going to see is just a trap on this play. Number 69 pulls out, and he's going to lead through and gets a good block on Venables. Big hole for Maurice Douglas. 14-yard gain. Douglas now with four rushes for 28 yards today. John Jones, the offensive guard for Kansas, leading that play. Oh, looks like somebody moved. Might have been Douglas. We had a good view of that. We got three flags down on that one. Looks like they wanted to run the same play, maybe to the other end. The Dead ball, side. illegal procedure, offense, five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. It's just the second penalty against Mason's troops. And Mason's, what is he saying there? Calm down. Yeah. Take it easy. I know you want to jump, but you'll get a good start, but wait until the ball is snapped, please. Let's quickly get on to Duke Fry. Thanks, Dave. You know, the last time the K-State's offense came off the field, a lot of frustration on their offensive line's part. They're not able to get the things done that they thought they could. And that may be the most impressive thing about KU so far. Offensively and defensively along the line. They've All right, Duke. Uh, offensively for KU, they're getting it done. Pete Fang with only his third catch of the year and in Kansas State territory at the 37-yard line. C.J. Masters fi finally brought him down. Little play action. Hillary turns to his left and hits Vang just right down the middle. But you see the play action where he faked it to Douglas on the right. That pulled the linebackers over to the left and allowed Vang that opening. And again, to emphasize how far Mason has brought this program, when he came here, in 1988, he really didn't have a tight end that he could depend on. Now he's got five of them. Chandler, Vang, Harris, Fetty, Wilford. <laughs> you, you look he's at the slew of them. And everywhere else, it's only two deep, except the tight end, it's five deep. And that's the end of the first quarter. Hillary has guided Kansas down the field to lead Kansas State. Seven nothing after the first 15 minutes of play. Now you can draw the roundest circles, perfect straight lines in any direction, even complicated geometric patterns, perfect every time with the amazing rolling ruler. The secret tool of architects and draftsmen has two tire-like gripping rollers that keep the rolling ruler level as it speeds across your work. The special meter automatically indicates the distance between your lines. The rolling ruler makes professional-looking office forms, charts, graphs, school projects come alive. Do geometry and trig faster and easier. Craftspeople find it irresistible. Dress patterns can be altered to any size. The handyman will love the built-in protractor for perfect angles or make beautiful curves and long straight lines that go on and on. Call or send for Rolling Ruler right now. Simply insert your pencil into any hole and roll straight lines, parallel lines. Insert two pencils and roll curves, arcs, and circles instantly. Redecorate like a professional. Replan your lawn and garden to perfect scale. Get results you'll be proud of. Kids love it just for doodling. Call or send $12.98 to Rolling Ruler now. You'll also receive the amazing Pantograph. Copy your favorite photos, cartoons, or designs to any size in just minutes. Finish with the confidence of a real artist. You'll impress yourself. Call or send now. You get the rolling ruler and the amazing Pantograph for only $12.98. Order now. <laughs> 
Mississippi Southern Miss tackles Tulane on the tough turf. The Golden Eagles are on the rise and ready to rumble in New Orleans. But the Green Wave gets busy with a dangerous D and potent offensive attack. Smooth moves and serious sticks. Tough grabs and head-on legs. Southern Miss and Tulane light up the Superdome in a special Thursday night battle on the tough turf. Live Thursday at 7.30 on Sunshine Network. Trying to present Big 8 college football on a beautiful campus of the University of Kansas made ever more beautiful today by sunshiny skies and temperatures in the mid 60s. Jayhawks are smiling right now. KU leads Kansas State as we start the second quarter of play. 7-0 and Willie Wildcat is saying that we got to get it going now. And right now it's Kansas State's defense that's on the field against the offense of KU. KU has it at the KSU 34 yard line. Second down, seven yards to go. With Duke Fry and Jim Ryan, I'm Dave Armstrong. Happy to have you along on a beautiful Saturday for college football. Hillary checking off at the line. Boy, oh boy, talking about dominating so far in this game. And the give is to Cousins, who picks up about three or four more. It's going to bring up third and about five. Kansas so far, Dave, been doing a good job of mixing things up with the run and the pass, a little play action. And when you run the ball as well as they've been able to do, play action is really the way to go because those linebackers, defensive linemen, they're flowing to the ball on the run. What they think is going to be a run, it really opens up those zones behind them for a big yardage for KU. Third down and a long four. Kansas State still without a first down. Kansas has racked up eight of them so far. And from the shotgun, Hillary given lots of time. What a catch! Across the middle, beautiful catch made by Douglas. And a first down. Everything going wrong for the Wildcats of Kansas State. They try some pressure. You can't see it in the right of your screen. Brooks Bardock coming on the blitz. He doesn't get there. Thread in the needle. It's a little man to man coverage there. Good throw, good catch. Douglas with a couple of catches in this game. One he caught and then fumbled. That one he held on to at the 19. Hillary again. Oh, almost picked off. Right there on the defensive coverage was Chris Patterson. Patterson made a good play just to break that one up. That's so frustrating when you're a defensive player. You know that you don't get your hands on the ball very often. When you do get your hands there, you don't catch it. That's why you see that it kind of looks foolish sometimes. Guys throwing their hands on the ground and pounding the turf. And, but it is frustrating for a defensive player to go through that. And only the second incomplete pass for Hillary. White slips down right at the line. That's going to be about it. And it's going to bring up third and 10 now for Kansas. Simino was there and Tony Williams. And really, it was White who slipped down behind the line. Kind of a nondescript play there. Doesn't gain a lot of yardage, but what it sets up is the fact that now Kansas has to go long yardage for a first down. And now they're thinking more, uh-oh, field goal. Is if it's third and short, they're thinking more touchdown. So a big play, even though it's somewhat nondescript. Two out wide to the right. Matt Gay is out wide to the left. Hillary on third and ten with the pressure. And the right play called as he tried to get it to Cousins on the screen, but Simino was right in Hillary's face. Simino, who can bench press, get this, folks, 500 pounds. You know what he can squat? <laughs> he can squat anything he wants, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. If he can bench press he can 500, <laughs> squat 682 pounds. You and I combined, plus another guy. Nyklov, who had four field goals against Tulsa on. This one well within his range, a 36 yard attempt. As Jim mentioned he had a 61 yarder earlier, but this one is blocked. Picked up by Kansas State. Patterson falls on the ball at the 21-yard line, and Kansas State is back in business. That's the second time this year that Eichloff has had one blocked. The other one was just the last game against Cal from 47. From behind, there's a jumper in the back. Number 33, no, it's not Jeff Simino, but there was a jumper from behind. It wasn't up front where they got penetration. 
somebody from the defensive backfield ran up and jumped. I know in the NFL that's not legal anymore. It looked like getting in there for Kansas Day was Jamie Mendez, and he is an opportunistic player. Apologize, it was tough to see on the replay exactly who that was, but Mendez, of course, outstanding defensive back who has five interceptions for the KSU Wildcats. But I think that's a big play for KSU to get some momentum, a block field goal. Now they're only down seven. A score will tie things up. Maybe that'll spark them. And a pickup of six yards on first down for the Wildcats. Second and four now from the 28-yard line. Three out wide to the right. Smart Gesso. Goodbye. Oh, man. Momolonga really came in quickly. He was there along with Kyle Moore. It looked, it looked like KSU was trying to pull somebody out in order to get a little rollout, but they just didn't get out quick enough to get Momolonga. Hassan Bailey was coming in from the linebacker spot as well. And that backs them up, Kansas State, to their own 20. Now it's third and 12. Kansas State still without a first down in this game. And Smart Gesso's been running for his life. Here comes the pressure again. Wow! Larry Thiel. State just in disarray. They don't know where Kansas is coming from. Larry Field comes unblocked. to see Mama Laga hold up the center so he can't get off on field, but there's no chance. Watch, just unblock. Eric Gallon goes out for a pass, doesn't stay in the block. Smart Jess is just not getting things going right now. Fourth sack of the day. Schneider booms one from his own end zone. Bowen all the way back to his own 30. Mendez right there with him, stride for stride, and Masters will bring him down. Man, Kansas State's offense is not only not going anywhere, they're going backwards. Without Sean Snyder, they'd be in the worst shape because mm. he's been their best weapon all day. A 55-yard punt from Snyder with 11-18 to go in the second quarter. Kansas still up on top by a touchdown. July 1992. Oldsmobile goes further than any other car company to redefine quality. Further than the lab. Further than the test track. The Oldsmobile Achieva went 100,000 miles against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry in a real-world test. Independent test results prove Achieva outperformed Accord and Camry in total cost, which includes maintenance, repair, and operating costs. Achieva. Quality redefined. From the company that went far enough to prove it. Oldsmobile. The power of intelligent engineering. Uh, oh, your cat may scat, but she leaves her hair behind. Get rid of it with Power Picker Upper by Telebrands. Power Picker Upper picks up hair, picks up crumbs, picks up dirt. It's so strong, it'll even pick up these coins. The miracle substance ZR7 never wears out. No tape to replace, no mess to empty. Can your vacuum cleaner pick up pet hair? Power Picker Upper never misses. Add this telescoping handle to reach high and low without bending or straining. For your clothing, you get this perfect personal picker-upper with convenient swivel head. You also receive not one, but two pocket picker-uppers that fit neatly anywhere you go. You get them all for only $19.95. Order now. To order, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-522-5333. Or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $4.50 shipping and handling to Power Picker-Upper, 4500 American Way, Roanoke, Virginia. Or call 1-800-522-5333. Well, Smart Gesso now getting uh, talking to by Bill Snyder. And as you mentioned, his son, Sean Snyder, is really keeping him in this game. And we asked Bill about coaching his son yesterday. He's a tremendous young man. I don't have an opportunity to talk about him a great deal, but you know, you, you love your children dearly, and a lot of people say you shouldn't coach your own son, and uh, it's been the greatest thing that's, uh, that's happened to me, just to have an opportunity to be around. And football coaches don't get to spend a lot of time with their families, and when you've got one that's right next to you, uh, it's it's special. And he's done quite, quite well. I've been very proud of his performance so far. I like that uh, little addendum so far. <laughs> so far. And well, so far today, he has been terrific. Hillary puts it up. Was overthrown looking for Harris the tight end but Rawlings was right there 
Hillary getting up slowly. Hillary takes another shot. As I said, Pat Rule does not like it. The amount of hits that he's taking, not only uh, from the pocket and throwing the ball and getting hit there, but the, all the running he's doing. He's taking a beating, and it'd be interesting to see if he holds up the whole season. If not, they have a sophomore in the wings, Frederick Thomas. Flag goes down as Douglas goes near midfield right at the 50-yard line. He's brought down by Venables. Well, let's see what the flag is all about. Kansas State players can't, aren't too happy. It looks like it's going to go against them. It is. Illegal participation. Oh, Looks like they had uh, 12 on the field, perhaps. And, and you know what? This is a 15-yard penalty. I think that's one of the rule changes this year, that uh, illegal participation is now a 15-yard penalty. And that's really got to stick in Snyder's crawl. Illegal substitution, defense, five-yard penalty, oh. repeat second down. Now that's a, not too many five men yards. on the field. That's a legal substitution. Right. In other words, they brought a guy in too late. So they'll uh, take the penalty. They had an eight-yard game, but they'll take the penalty and make it second and five. White fighting hard across the 50 down to the 45 of Kansas State. And Mendez finally brings him down there. Let's talk for a moment about Jamie Mendez, number 32. Already 12 career interceptions, which ties him with Clarence Scott for the Kansas State lead. He had four interceptions in that Temple game earlier this year and wasn't named Big 8 Player of the Week. <laughs> that went to Ron Wolfork, who had a great game for Colorado that Saturday. Douglas cuts it back. Douglas near another first down at the 35. And again, it's Mendez on the stop. When you start calling out Mendez and Masters and the defensive secondary on the stops and the runs, you know your defense is getting beat up front. But look at the size of that hole offensively. Kansas just pouring over the defensive players of Kansas State, just getting them off the ball and just blowing them two, three yards behind the line of scrimmage. And you're going to have big holes and big yardage when that happens. First and 10, that was a first down from the 35. Here comes Douglas again. Brooks Barta brings him down at the 30-yard line, but a pickup of five on first down. Also in on the stop was Brent Venables. Now Kansas State's going to be on roller skates, so to speak. They're back on their heels. They just know that they're getting blown off the ball. And there's not much they can do about it except try to encourage each other, spur each other on, say, come on, we got to do something. And they need a big play, possibly a sack or something. Guy in the hat right there with the headphones on is uh, Brooks's dad, Roger Barta, who's a high school coach at Smith Center and coached Brooks. So Snyder knows how he feels coaching his own son. Monty Cousins goes for another first down, down to the 29-yard line. How important is this game for Glenn Mason? One of the things that he did during the spring football drills and then again in preparation for this contest is all the players and the coaches wore a purple shirt, T-shirt, under their football jerseys that all it said on it was 16-12, which was the score of last year's game. And I like that. You'll see a lot of coaches to say, oh, it's just one other game. It's just the, the next opponent that week. You know, rivalry doesn't mean that much. And Glenn Mason say, no, it does mean something. It means very much to us, and it's important. Nothing against Kansas State, he said, as you see how short they are on that first down. Nothing against them. This was just a motivator for us. I didn't want to take anything away from their great victory, but I just wanted our players to have a reminder of how close we were to a bowl game. Third down, and you saw how far they have to go. Hillary calls his own number and easily has it. At the 28-yard line, first and 10, KU. 7-0 our score. Kansas probably thinking to themselves it should be more than that. They've had a couple of turnovers and a blocked field goal. They've been methodically going down the field, something we said that they could do. They don't really necessarily get big plays, and there's not one offensive player other than Hillary you can point to and say, oh, he's having a great game. I guess Douglas has run for some good yardage, but Cousins has already been in there running. A couple receivers have caught passes. They've just methodically spread the ball around going down the field. You see Jeff Simino. Simino is coming off, so we have an official's timeout briefly. Simino now... Uh, coming out under his own power. An odd number for a nose guard. 
Number 33, 33. converted fullback yeah. at Arizona State. Played, uh, uh, actually attended Utah for a short time, but transferred to Bay State after that. Followed a girlfriend to Utah, and they broke up. He left the school. Maurice Douglas around the far side, inside the 20, down to the 17-yard line. Get back to talk about Jeff Simino from, from Kansas State. He had to sit out last year because he transferred, so he wasn't eligible. This is his last year of eligibility, and he was disrupting the practice. This guy loves to play football so much. He was just a scout team player. He was disrupting practices so much, and coaches had to get him to calm down. It's like a little bit of a neck problem. White backed up right at the 20. Good play defensively by John Butler, the junior out of Hastings, Nebraska. Take a look at this on replay. You see the John Jones guard pulling for the trap again, but John Butler was having none of this. Oh, nice play. He just stands up the offensive tackle. I think that was... That's the crowd outside the stadium. Now we come inside, and we find third and seven. Hillary rolls out. Fires it. It's caught at the four-yard line. Pass is caught by Matt Gay. First down, Kansas inside the five. We've seen Chip Hillary roll out, and we can tell when he wants to throw and when he wants to run. This time he stops, he throttles down, and he throws. Matt Gay just found an opening in the zone. They ran a little combination pattern over there with he and Douglas. He comes off, gets free, wide open. First and goal from the three. Cousins goes down to the two. Jody Killian tripped him up there. Killian, a starter last year. As I mentioned, one of eight defensive starters that are seniors on the Kansas State team, and six of those are four-year starters for KSU. A lot of experience. Second and goal from the two. Cousins again. Touchdown! His third touchdown of the year. Eichloff will come on for the point after. Eichloff now with 43 in a row. 23 of those this year. 44 points this year for Eichloff. And Cousins runs it in from the two. You see Cousins just taking the straight handoff. And once again, look where the line of scrimmage is pushed back to, all the way back to the goal line. That's where Kansas is driving their defensive players. Look at look at Hesley Hempstead. Just crabbing. You see how he kept his legs driving into the defensive player with his head down and just drove him all the way into the backfield, uh, into the defensive backfield, into the end zone, an easy touchdown for Cousins. And Kansas now has widened their lead to 14-0 over K-State. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. Excuse me, do you know what stock options are? I wish I did. When is a weak dollar good for business? Good? I don't know. The world of finance and investing can be pretty confusing unless you call for this, the Wall Street Journal's Video Guide to Money and Markets. It explains the markets in clear, simple English and brings them to life. This exclusive 30-minute video is free when you call for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just $37, over 20% off the newsstand price. Subscribe to the journal and get a daily view of the whole world of business and how it affects you. Information you know you should know. Call now and you'll be ready next time someone asks you. Are munis always a safe investment? I'm not sure. Call toll-free 800-652-2112 for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and your free video on money and markets. That's 800-652-2112. Defending national champ, number one in the poll, the Purple Steamroller has flattened 19 in a row. The Huskies now howl for death. 
Washington and Oregon, live Saturday at 6.30 on Sunshine. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Lawrence. Kansas has opened up a 14-0 lead on their cross-state rivals, Wildcats of Kansas State. 7.55 to go in the first half. I'm Dave Armstrong, along with Jim Ryan and Duke Fries on the sidelines. And this sun-drenched crowd has enjoyed the offensive show by Kansas, but perhaps more the defensive showing of the Jayhawks, who have limited Kansas State to negative yardage. Kansas does have an outstanding defense. You know, they were number two in the nation in total defense until they played the University of California. They gave up 406 yards. That's a, by far the most total they've given up all year. It dropped down to number eight in the nation. What win there is somewhat at Eichloff's back. Not that he needs much help. Has a good leg, but this one will go out of bounds. Eichloff with uh, a rare miscue on the kickoff. And Kansas State will be in great field position to start again. But let's see if their offense can get started. Their offense has really struggled so far here today. Dave, let's go back to this touchdown. I was, I was watching Hesley Hempstead, the left guard. See how he's driving his legs? He's lower than the defensive player. That's textbook technique for an offensive lineman. And you can see the hole it creates. An easy touchdown for Cousins. I can't say enough about what the offensive line for Kansas is doing in this game to the defensive. And a good, formidable, formidable defensive front for Kansas State. And you see the drive. Again, real good field position. And... Kansas has won that battle today as well. The field position battle. The only time Kansas State has had great field position was after that opening interception, but they went nowhere. In fact, turned it right back over again. Smart Gesso now hoping for some more time with which to operate. Begins at the 35-yard line, first and 10. Smart Gesso changing the play at the line. Shouldn't have. Eric Gallon saying, why'd you call my number? Gilbert Brown saying, I'm glad you did. <laughs> I think Gilbert Brown comes from the side where they're trying to pull a guard that block for Eric for Eric Allen, but no one blocks Gallon. You know, it's such a good feeling when you when you come through, excuse me, Brown. Gilbert Brown comes through untouched. And you see that football player there with the football. Eric Allen was trying to gain some yards. But you come through untouched, it's like a dream come true. You say to yourself, before you even make the hit, oh, this is gonna be sweet. <laughs> you're already you've already got the oh, yeah. congratulations the uh, in your mind. You're already thinking how you're going to wave to the crowd. Eric Gallon, who averages 4.5 yards per carry, listen to this, folks, today, five carries minus three yards. First and 15 now after the loss of five. Like that, penalty it was against Kansas State, and Kansas took the penalty, so back him up five. And first down over again. Just tripped as he got the ball. Lucky to hang on to it, really. The loss of a couple more. Second and 17. This is not the way Kansas State wanted to get started. I know Kansas State's a great come from behind team. They've done it in the fourth quarter before, but this is not the way they wanted to start here today. Their offensive line, and we said it at the top, had to be. Um, an offensive line was blowing people off the off the ball, but when you're facing Dana Stubblefield and Chris Mamalonga and Gilbert Brown, they're just not able to do it. You see Bob Fellow, the defensive coordinator from Kansas. He's got to be thrilled. Oh, you see the smile. He's got to be thrilled with the way his team is playing so far. Out to Gallon, cuts it back. State, but Sylvester is going the right way for KU. And unbelievably, Gallon had a lot of yardage in front of him if he just hangs on to the ball. He's got a couple of good blockers out there. You see Steve Harvey being blocked, and I think he just braces himself. He puts his hand down to stop from falling to brace his fall. The ball was in his hand, though, and he, it, the, the ground actually knocked it out of his hand. In this case, the ground can cause a fumble, right, because he wasn't down. That's right. Snyder saying, I can't believe the ground can cause a fumble. 
Well, that's a fumble. You have to have your knee down before you're down. If that was his hand, his free hand, that he had touched the ground with, he would certainly still be able to continue with his run. Snyder's point here is what? That he, he the ground can't cause the fumble. And the I, official's point is he wasn't down. He just I don't know what he argument laid it he on the carpet. Have. Yeah, I don't know what argument he would have because I don't think he has a case. Right. Kansas has it. Each team now with two turnovers. Look at here. He's definitely not down there. Look, yeah. now he's down. After the ball comes loose, he's down. Hit rolling stops See, Monty Cousins and, and, inside the 10 at the 7. And Eric Gallon's got to know a little bit more than that. I mean, he's a, he's a veteran player. He's in his senior year. He's got to know that you've got to tuck that ball away. You don't carry it anyway with just your hand grasping the ball. You've got to get that into your body and carry it that way. Certainly, you want to try to stay up, put your hand down to bounce, get more yards, but you can't do it with the ball in your hand. Gaines is trying to put the hammer down here. Douglas hit immediately by Venables and gets it down to around the six-yard line. Third down, they need to get to the two for the first down, so third and about four. Kansas State just trying to stop the bleeding here. And those defensive players are saying, look, let's just try to keep them out of the end zone. If we give them a field goal, we give them a field goal. Maybe we can block it again. Just keep them out of the end zone, or we're in deep trouble for the rest of the day. Kansas State would dearly love to hold KU to a field goal here. Hillary on the draw. It'll be fourth down at the five. All right, here's the situation then for Glenn Mason. He said, if it's going to be fourth down in something again, I'm going to kick the field goal. It's and a little easier what? decision when you're up 14 to nothing. The field goal unit comes on. There was a, one of the students here in the student paper said, Coach M in the personals, if it's fourth and one at the seven, Please kick the field goal, please. <laughs> well, it's fourth and three at the five, and they're kicking the field goal. Eichloff with a chip shot. 22-yard field goal attempt. This one not blocked, puts it up and through. And Kansas tacks on three more after the fumble by Gallon. Eichloff with 47 points for KU this year, and it's 17-0 seven no, Kansas. If you hang out with America's top builders, you'll see they rely on Makita high-torque tools. Corded or cordless, Makita's got the torque to power its way through anything. And with service centers from coast to coast, you'll never get caught with your tools down. At Makita, you've got the tools to get the job done. Makita, it's all the power you need. The Orlando Sentinel calls it important television, watched by the movers and shakers of the state. It's the highly respected public affairs show, Sunday in Florida. Sunday in Florida profiles the hottest political issues of the day with host Steve Wilkerson. Hear from Florida leaders and the press that covers them, all on Sunday in Florida, 9 till 10 a.m. Sunday on Sunshine Network, Florida's best. Come on, sweetheart. Uh, your first big snow, Joey. Here you go. Joey doesn't care that inside is the world's most energy-efficient furnace. Here you he go. Or that Carrier can save up to 40% annually on heating. Look at him. He loves All he cares about is how warm and comfy Carrier keeps it inside. Hey, come on. Joe? If you care about energy efficiency and saving money, call your Carrier Joey. dealer. Uh, turn the knob, Joey. Carrier, we're the inside guys. Now look at that crowd. That has got to make uh, the administration around here smile big, and nobody's smiling bigger than Glenn Mason. A sellout crowd here at Memorial Stadium. Jim, I've been coming to games here since 1976, and we drove in from Kansas City earlier this morning, you and I, and got in a traffic jam at 10 o'clock this morning. That was delightful for me to see. College football, the resurgence here at KU. Coleman has it at the five. Bus outside, 4-3 speed, look out. And out of bounds at the 30. No 
flags came down. I thought there might have been a personal foul, but looked like they just rode him out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Kansas gets the field goal from Eichloff. They only go seven yards, but after that fumble by Gallon, the opportunistic Jayhawks tack on three more. There is a penalty, but it's against Kansas State. Looked like Andre Coleman, when he's running the ball, actually started to relax like I'm going out of bounds, but he was not yet out of bounds. So Kansas said, well, we can still tackle you. Holding on the return, receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, Mama said there'd be days like these. Yeah. You, you think it, well, things can't get worse, and, and then they do. How do you stop that? How do you, how do you somehow, from a coaching staff to the players, how do you get the momentum switched the other way? It has to happen on the field. I believe you have to come up with a big play. You have to come up with, uh, and it, for Kansas State, it can just be a 10-yard game right now. Anything to give them just a little bit of life. They need something to cling on to. It has to be done on the field. First and 10 all the way back at the 15-yard line. Kansas has not given Kansas State any room to breathe. Jesso again changing the play. Jeez. Unbelievable. Smart Jesso just gets the ball, looks up, and sees blue shirts. Flag comes down. Smart Jesso sacked again. That's the fifth sack of the day. Kansas coming with pressure. You see Mama Longa. Look, look at that holding. He's so quick that he just cannot be blocked. 57, Jeff Smith. Jeff Smith tries to block him, but Mama Longa just so strong and so quick. That combination just overpowers Jeff Smith, who's only 6'1", 2 cents. Penalty decline. Second down. Kansas this time will take the sack, which backs Kansas State up to their own 12. Mama Longa, how would you like to be across the line? From <laughs> no, thank you. I, I like it up here in the booth. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, you got to come up the line thinking, I can't block. There's no way I can block this guy. Mm-hmm. 6'3", 290. Then you've got Stubblefield, 6'3", 285. Gilbert Brown, 6'3", 305. Man, there's a couple NFL teams that would be envious of that one. Absolutely. Second and 13. Gallon. Back to the original line, but that's about it. Up to the 15. Thiel and Brown sandwich him there. This is about as dominant a performance as I've seen in a long time by a defense, and it surprises me because I thought Kansas State would at least have the weapons in their skill positions to move the ball down the field a little bit, maybe get up with a big play here or there, but so far, not a. Well, Kansas held Ball State to 43 yards rushing, held Oregon State to 18 yards passing, so they're capable of this. Smart Gesso, look out, sack number six! down. Smargesso limps off. Hassan Bailey gets into the act. Looks like the penalty is going to be against Kansas State as well. It is. Boy. Kansas coming with lots of pressure. You see a little stunt move. Bailey, he misses him the first time, and then Thiel misses him, and look at the speed of Bailey. Hassan Bailey, only 205 pounds at linebacker, but one of the fastest linebackers in the Big 8 was able to come back and get Smar Gesso. Six sacks already for the Kansas defense, and Sean Snyder comes on to punt again. Bowen back at his own 45. This one off the side of Snyder's foot. Takes a Kansas State bounce, though. And will be taken out of bounds at the Kansas State 45. Kansas with excellent field position again. They have 343 to go in the half and all their timeouts. You have to wonder at this point, Kansas State just can't get anything going. And it's certainly not the fault of Jason Smart Gesso. But I would wonder if they might go to Matt Garber, who was competing with Smart Gesso earlier in the season for the starting quarterback position is just to, just for a spark. You know, you're saying, what can you do? Maybe they try to go to a different quarterback. Smart Gesso might vote for that after the <laughs> way he's been hit. First and 10 for Kansas at the 46-yard line. Hillary puts it up and long. Incomplete. Pass intended for Rob LaCourcy and broken up nicely by Thomas Randolph. 
One of the things we said at the top of the show was we thought Kansas had to try to go deep to establish some kind of deep threat to keep Kansas State from crowding the line of scrimmage. We've seen them do that several times. They haven't been successful, but that still spreads things out. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you, LaCurcy is open on this. Hillary underthrows this ball. If he gets it out to Kersey's le uh, LaCurcy's left just a little bit and over the head of Thomas Randolph, it's six points because LaCurcy had Randolph beat. Douglas hit at the 42-yard line. Daryl Harbert was there to hit him first. And it's going to bring up a third down situation for KU. Chip Hillary, senior year. Hillary and just having an outstanding senior campaign. They had Hillary calling his own plays a little bit in the spring. They have not gone to that yet this fall. But that shows you the confidence they have in a guy like Hillary. Third and six. Quick drop, pass caught, Gay, still on his feet inside the 30 to the 29. <laughs> well, they're having fun right now. It is fun. This is the time when you really laugh. You always say football is fun, but you, you, you really laugh at times like this. Chris Patterson, see the linebacker? He's got to be out in that flat. It's a little zone coverage. He's got to drop into that passing lane. He's not there in time. It's a wide open lane for Hillary to get the ball to Matt Gay. Another first down for Kansas at the 29-yard line. And Hillary checking off. Douglas, much room, about three, four yards on first down. Masters came up from his strong safety position, and Steve Moten hit him as well. Hillary today, you can't ask for much more than that. A couple of his passes have been caught and then fumbled, so not interceptions. 104 yards through the air today for Hillary. Hasn't had to run a lot today. No. There you see Tony Williams down on one knee. You really can't fault the defense of Kansas State. They've really played very, very well. They've hung in there, but they haven't come up with the big play. They did have a, the one turnover by Kansas, but they've got a, two turnovers by Kansas. You're correct. They've got to come up with some big plays to keep them out of the end zone here, but you can't fault them because you're on the field so much. When you're on the sidelines and you see your, your offense get one, two, three plays and out, one, two, three plays and out, or a turnover, boy, it just starts wearing on you. And you're tired. I mean, I think they're tired. And it's still the first half. Well, you saw Brooks Barta, and he was in on that stop of George White. He had a good look at number 44. He read that one well. That's a football player. Mm -hmm. uh, he and Jeff Simino, they were uh, teammates, high school teammates. Rushed for over 3,500 yards, the two of them combined, in one year. They were both uh, playing in the same backfield. But these are guys, weightlifting isn't just a hobby. It's a passion with these guys. He, he just looks like a football yeah, player. Six foot, 220. So he might have a chance to play on Sunday. He wants to be a coach just like his dad. Some pressure on Hillary. Picked off. Look out. Goodbye. Masters will score. Wow, what a turnaround for the Wildcats. C.J. Masters. An 80-yard interception return. Exactly what we had been talking about just a minute ago about a big play, a turnover, and not only a turnover, but a turnaround with an 80-yard interception refer return for a touchdown. That makes things a little more interesting just before halftime and only 1.31 to go. Hillary had not made a mistake all day until that throw. Wow, how quickly things turn. Kansas looking to add some to their 17-0 lead. Instead, it comes the other way. Emily flag goes down. A little pushing and shoving going on. <laughs> Mal Malunga got into the act. He wanted a shutout. He was a little mad. <laughs> well, not the defense's fault. They wanted that uh, goose egg, didn't they? Isn't that frustrating for a defensive player when you're going for that shutout and the offense gives up points? No, because you you actually say to yourself, we didn't give it up. <laughs> you become, forget the you team get a little more concept, possessive, right? yeah. <laughs> forget the team concept. Clausen on for the point after. Clausen only uh, 
has kicked two of these this year and missed one of those. This one low, but good. Ooh. And there's the man of the hour for Kansas State. Another one. Clawson who gets the point after. And C.J. Masters with his first interception of the year. And that one goes 80 yards for the touchdown. Chip Hillary had not made a mistake, as we said, all game long, or at least in this first half so far. He's going, trying to get it into the flat again. And that's where, uh, that's where they think that they can get the ball. Okay, we're going to watch the extra point that floated over the, the uh, goal post. Kind of a bad snap, but he gets it down. The Stubblefield, no, Stubblefield didn't get a hand on it. It was just a bad kick, low kick. You were a kicker but, in high school. <laughs> it looked like that. Let's take a I, I'm, Yeah, as a matter of fact, they did. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you weren't a kicker in the pros. <laughs> You look at Hillary getting a little bit of pressure, but tries to do the same thing, going to the flat where they've had success all day. It wasn't a particularly well-thrown ball. C.G. Masters had it just hit him right in the chest. Hillary hits him right on the eight. Poorly thrown ball, and I think Hillary just rushed that because he was getting some pressure. Threw it off his back foot. Oh, what a feeling for C.J. Masters to see nothing but the end zone in front of him. And Kansas State is back in this game. 17-7 our score. Hillary wants one more crack with 131 to go. And now if you're Kansas, do you try to tack on some more points here? Do you play a little conservative? I think why not? Uh, you still have a nice lead. It's a little bit, uh, you want to take away this momentum that Kansas State just created with a minute 31 to go before halftime. You don't want them going in with all the momentum and feeling good about themselves saying, hey, we're in this ball game. If you can get a few put a few first downs together, maybe get a field goal out of it before halftime. That'll really deflate the Wildcats. Back deep, George White and Charlie Bowen waiting to kick of Clawson. Squid kick taken by the up man. Taken by Powell. Powell gets it ahead. Good field position yeah. for Kansas. And especially now with this yeah. field position, why not try to go down? And, I mean, you're only a few, what, 20 yards away from Eichloff's range. Absolutely. He's already got a 61-yard field goal, so I'd be a little surprised if Kansas doesn't try to go down and make another score out of this. Well, Hillary hobbles back onto the field. It doesn't look like he's playing at 100% right now physically, but Mason told us that one of the things he loves about this kid is he is a gutsy guy. He never complains about injuries. No play. No play. Kansas State calls a timeout. Before that play, Kansas State took a timeout. 125 to go here before the intermission, and Kansas State has made a game of it again after that interception. And given uh, Chip Hillary's mom a little bit reason to be somewhat concerned that it's still a 17-7 lead for KU. Next weekend on Prime's Tough Turf Saturday, Vanderbilt battles Georgia, Virginia will face North Carolina, or Houston meets Baylor. So check your local listings for the game and time in your area. A look at C.J. Masters, number eight. The guy uh, next to him, the free safety. Masters is the strong safety. The free safety, Mende, is the one getting all the headlines with those five interceptions, but C.J., another one of those seniors on defense that can really play some great D as well for the Wildcats. He showed it on that last play. And again, is to Cousins, trying to go outside. Stopped after a minimal game. And uh, kept in bounds. Look what it's done. The touchdown by C.J. Masters. What it's done for the Kansas State defense. It's got them pumped. You can see they got a little more life. They're running around. They're patting each other on the back a little more. Now if their offense can do the same in that second half, we're going to have a ball game. Kansas had that 12-3 lead on Kansas State last year into the fourth quarter and then lost the game. So Kansas knows this one's certainly not in the bag yet. Hillary on a keeper. Hillary out of bounds and keep the clock rolling. So he was down just inside. Kit Rawlings forced him down, the clock moving with 37 seconds to go in the first half and neither team using any timeouts to try to stop it. 
I don't know if this game will get close in the second half, but I think it's a mistake by Glenn Mason not to take a couple timeouts and try to get down there and score. Like I say, you know, starting this drive on the 40-yard line or the 39-yard line, they only had to go 20 or 25 yards to get in range for Eichloff, so we'll see if it comes back to haunt them. See, I'm going to disagree with you. I think right here you just get into that locker room with that 10-point lead. That's my nature as you have uh, Douglas carrying it to midfield. I, mean, I don't disagree with your deal, but I'm just saying my personality would be I want that 10-point lead. They're going into the locker room at halftime as the time expires, but I think that, uh, see, Kansas State has tremendous momentum right yep. now. Well, they'll go into that locker room with a lot better feeling. Mason knows his defense played tremendous in that first half. And his offense played well. Uh, at times, but then that turnover right at the end of the first half cost them big. Kansas jumped out to that 17-0 lead. Kansas State came back with that seven point to the touchdown from C.J. Masters, the 80-yard interception return, and that might have turned this game around. We'll have to wait and see as they head to the locker room and we head down to the field to Duke Fry. Thanks, Dave. You know, we were talking about the defense for K-State. They're hurting right now. Jeff Simino is still on the bench. He had ice on the back of his neck. They say it's just a sore neck, but he's having problem with the strength in his hand, so he may not be back in the ballgame. Tony Williams, it appears, has a knee strain on the left knee. He was iced down they had it wrapped he may not be back at all either all right thanks Duke and we'll also keep an eye on Chip Hillary and see how well he does in the second half look like he was hobbled a little bit in that first half we'll be back with our halftime in just a moment we've got the players of the week a special feature on Gail Sayers and much more at the half Kansas is leading 17 to 7 Oldsmobile redefines quality here's proof Call 1-800-THE-TEST to get independent test results from a 100,000-mile real-world test of the new Oldsmobile Achieva against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry. Learn how Achieva outperformed Accord and Camry in total cost, which includes maintenance, repair, and operating costs. You'll even get a free video documenting the test. Achieva, quality redefined from the company that went far enough to prove it. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. A free back-to-back -back home run offer from the Sporting News. Home run number one. A free home run video. The power, the glory. Major League Baseball and the Sporting News have created a new video. The 50 greatest home runs in baseball history. And it's absolutely free with your paid subscription. The myth makers, the record breakers. They're all here and they're all yours when you subscribe to the Sporting News. But only if you call this number for this amazing TV offer. Home run number two, four free issues of the Sporting News. You'll get four free issues of great baseball, football, basketball, and hockey coverage. If you like it, you'll get 27 more issues at this great TV price. If not, just write cancel on the bill and owe nothing. The four issues are yours to keep. Remember, you'll get the 50 greatest home runs video and four issues of the Sporting News absolutely free. So call this number now and get your free back-to-back -back home runs. Pac-10 Powerball explodes with head-on high-impact football. The West Coast top stars turn up the heat. Cutting for glory in the nation's most rugged conference. Pac-10 football. It's a hit. Defending national champ, number one in the poll. The purple steamroller has flattened 19 in a row. The Huskies now howl for death. Washington and Oregon live Saturday at 6.30 on Sunshine. Well, Kansas jumped out to a 17-0 lead. Kansas State came back with 1.31 to go before the intermission. C.J. Masters with an 80-yard interception return for a touchdown, and it's 17-7 at the half. And as we do each week here on our Big 8 telecast, let's take a look back at last week's top individual performances. Big 8 Defensive Player of the Week honors went to University of Oklahoma's Mike Coates. The junior linebacker had 11 tackles, two for minus yardage, and broke up two passes in the Sooners' 17-3 win over Iowa State last Saturday. Coates in the Oklahoma defense limited the Cyclones to 156 total offensive yards and no touchdowns. The Big 8 Offensive Player of the Week was Mike Coates' teammate, Oklahoma quarterback Kale Gundy. In the Sooners' victory over ISU, Gundy completed 21 of 28 passes for 333 yards, his third career 300-yard passing day. The junior Oklahoma native 
now has 3,056 career passing yards, second on the all-time Sooner passing list behind Bobby Warmack and the 30th on the Big 8 list. The all-time conference leader is his older brother and current Oklahoma State quarterback coach, Mike Gundy, with 7,997 yards. That's yeah, quite a one-two punch, those Gundys. Well, the one-two punch for Kansas today has been Hillary and Douglas. Douglas has rushed for 63 yards for Kansas. Hillary has thrown for 104 yards. All adds up to a Kansas 10-point lead at the half, 17-7. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. Uh, I think we all agree. Incidentally, I'm Peter Falk, and I'm talking for Easter Seals. I think we all agree people with disabilities deserve the right to go to the same places you and I go. It's only right. And now it's the law. The Americans with Disabilities Act directs all businesses to make their facilities accessible to people with disabilities. That's good for disabled Americans, but I'm here to tell you, it's good for business too. I see it as 43 million potential new customers. If you have a restaurant or store, I urge you to make it accessible. It's not as if you had to knock down the building. It could be as simple as a wider aisle or a little ramp or a bigger type on the menu. And hey, if I come by and I have to wait a little while for a table because you're busier than usual, I'll understand. To find out how you can make your business accessible, contact the Easter Seal Society in your community. This is Peter Falk for Easter Seals. The Winston Cup Series is off this week, but we'll be with you Thursday evening. This week in NASCAR, will come your way from Birmingham, Alabama. Hope you can join us this Thursday night. Live Thursday night at 11 on Sunshine Network. Welcome back to Kansas. The Jayhawks leading the Wildcats 17-7 at the half. Certainly one of the more heralded players in Kansas football history is a little guy by the name of Gail Sayers, man from Omaha, number 48 in the KU Hall of Fame. Went on to start him with the Chicago Bears. And let's take a look now at number 48, Gail Sayers. He came out of the University of Kansas known as the Kansas Comet. His real name was Gail Sayers. Born in Kansas, raised in Omaha, KU coach Jack Mitchell won the intense recruiting battle for Sayers' talents, and it paid off handsomely for Jayhawk fans. An All-American in 1963 and 1964, Sayers still holds the school record for longest touchdown run. 99 yards set against Nebraska in 1963. A first-round draft choice of the Chicago Bears in 1965, Sayers took the NFL by storm, scoring six touchdowns in one game and earning NFL Rookie of the Year honors. But in his fourth year in Chicago, Sayers damaged his right knee. Two years later, similar problems to his left knee. 
After the second injury, Sayers would play in only four more regular season NFL games. Despite the injuries, Sayers would gain almost 5,000 yards in his all too brief career. He would leave the game considered one of the greatest kick returners in league history. In 1977, five years after he retired, Gail Sayers was elected to Pro Football's Hall of Fame. Gail Sayers, number 48, is Jersey retired here at Kansas. He's on the ring of honor. And right now, it's an honorable lead for Kansas. The Jayhawks with a 10-point advantage over the Wildcats of Kansas State. 17-7 our score. And we'll be back with the highlights and the first half stats when we come back to Memorial Stadium in Lawrence in just a moment. This close to the thrill of real life on the Discovery Channel. It's your world. Tire Kingdom. The tires you need. The fastest service satisfaction guarantee. Welcome back to the Big 8 Game of the Week on Prime Network. Because of time constraints, we must move ahead in the contest. When we return, we'll have more Big 8 action here on Prime Network. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. No one has money to burn, especially not today. Right after it was a year, the defroster thing went on it. The car was very good for the first 40 or 50,000 miles, and since then, I've, I've really had a lot of trouble. That's where Consumer Reports comes in. It can save you hundreds or thousands of dollars on stereo systems, microwave ovens, or minivans. Hi, I'm Bob Knoll. Head of Auto Testing for Consumer Reports, the magazine that works for you. We can show you how you could save $2,000 or more on car insurance, how you could save $3,000 next time you buy a new car. It's one of the very few objective sources of information you can get. Everybody needs an, an edge. Call now for your trial issue of Consumer Reports. If you like it, you'll get 12 more issues, including the 1993 buying guide, all for just $22. Or write cancel on the bill, return it, and owe nothing. You'll also get the 1992 buying guide free with your paid subscription. So call for your trial issue now. Call 1-800-652-2112. <laughs> Tough Turf Saturday just got tougher as Houston takes their best shot at Baylor and talented trigger man J.J. Joe. Or Vanderbilt Battles Georgia, live Saturday on Sunshine Network. Prime Network proud to bring you our Big 8 Game of the Week from the beautiful campus in Lawrence of the University of Kansas. Right now, Kansas is leading the way. Mount Oread is jam-packed today. They estimate a crowd there of 7,000. Imagine when this stadium opened in 1921, there were only 5,000 in the stadium. 
And now 7,000 up on the hill and 52, 53,000 more inside watching Kansas beat Kansas State at the half. 17 to 7 our score. With Duke Fry and Jim Ryan, I'm Dave Armstrong, and we're glad to have you along as the third quarter gets started with Dan Eichloff kicking off. A short kick, and it comes to Gerald Benton. Benton dancing around and gets across the 25 at the 27 yard line. And that's where Kansas State will start their offense. Jason Smart Gesso didn't get to throw it very often. He was backpedaling and looking at a lot of pressure and getting the final instructions from Bill Snyder. Bill Snyder probably at halftime, he's got to be telling his guys, we can't play any worse than we did in that first half. Yet, we are not out of this ball game. Ten points is not something we can't overcome. You've got to believe in yourself. He's turned this program around with that type of thinking. He's got to turn this game around. And his offensive line has got to give Smart Gesso some time. Let's see if they do. Rolling out. Smart Gesso hit again. Another sack. Brian Christian got him. That's like uh, feeding the Wildcats to the Christians, uh, isn't it? It's just, a, <laughs> it's just a race to the quarterback for these guys. See, uh, Jason Smart Gesso going to try to buy himself a little time by getting out of the pocket, but Christian would have nothing to do with it. He's, his job is to keep Smart Gesso in there. He did it and got the sack, so he's going to be graded very well on that play come tomorrow when they're watching the film. Second down, now 14 yards to go, and again, Kansas State's offense goes backwards. Minus 32 yards in the first half, and Smart Gesso has to take a timeout. So things don't start much better for the Wildcats. Oh, here in the second half. 14.09 to go, third quarter. Kansas by 10. As a truck company for 90 years, we understand the value of a strong frame, a reassuring strength for towing, whether you're on road or off road. GMC Truck, the strength of experience. this Eckerd Express photo employee what film speed to use for indoor sports photography under fluorescent lighting. What happened? He knew. I see. And this woman, after serving 60 customers in a full eight-hour day. Don't tell me. Still smiling. We're in trouble. Express Photo is a multi-service photo center in select Eckerd stores where trained photo experts can answer your questions and develop your prints to perfection. <laughs> Funny, he doesn't look so smart. He, uh, works for us, sir. Huh? Third quarter action, Kansas State calling a timeout. Smart Gesso not happy about that. Second and 14 now. Smart Gesso to roll out. This time, given time, wants to go deep. And overthrows his intended receiver, Andre Coleman. Looks like Kansas State is starting to roll Smart Gesso out a little bit. Get him outside the pocket. Try to give him some more time. Yeah, you can see in the first couple plays what they talked about at halftime. Some of the adjustments that they're trying to make. That time they had two tight ends, two backs, only one wide receiver in the pattern, which was Coleman. And actually, Smart Gesso, if he had thrown the out to him, was wide open. When he pumped the out and tried to go up, Vaughn was there. If they had tried to throw the out, it was there. So that's the adjustment, trying to add another tight end, give him more time. Give him more time and just have one or two guys out in the pattern third and 14 patterns need to go a little deeper now gallon the long setback rushed for minus two yards in the first half look out smart gesso smashed again 
Larry Thiel in the backfield again, it looks like. Larry this is amazing because Marchesa wants to run the option to the left. He can't even get back from center. You see Mamalanga off the ball, but Larry Thiel is in his face before he can even start, even think about making a move on a defensive end or pitching the ball back to his running back. He can't even think about that. He's caught in the backfield. Penalty against, looks like, Kansas. They jumped the gun a little bit. Oh, no wonder they were in the backfield so quick. <laughs> well, <laughs> they've been in the backfield quick a lot today. Much to the chagrin of Kansas State, but much to the delight of that man, Glenn Mason. Third down over again. That's a little better situation now. Third and eight. Marchesso's looking at the pressure that looked like Kansas cut. Oh. Oh. They give it to Gallon. He throws it across the middle. Incomplete. A direct snap to Eric Gallon. I'm talking about Smartgesso changing the play. That was all a trick. Smartgesso calling out signals, thinking that Kansas would relax because he's not even under center, and they snap it right to Gallon. Watch. Here's Smartgesso way over the right of your screen. He goes out of your screen. They give it to Eric Gallon, who throws a nice ball, but way over. Well, the pass was intended for Mitch running. He was bumped into, but the official ruled that it was an uncatchable ball. Sean Snyder on to punt again. This one hangs up in the wind. Charlie Bowen comes up at the 40 to get it. And goes across to the 47-yard line. Well, Chip Hillary will come back out for Kansas here in the third quarter. And Glenn Mason really likes his gutty quarterback. I used to say Chip Hillary was my type of quarterback. That he didn't throw all that great. He didn't run all that great. He just uh, was a competitor and a winner. And, one day his mother says, hey, coach, what's wrong with his running? What's wrong with his throwing? And I started thinking about it. I said, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. He's an all-around good college quarterback. He's a scrappy guy. He's a tough. He's a fierce competitor. And, uh, you know, uh, he's one of those guys that when it's the, you know, the bottom of the ninth and you're down by three runs and the, the county's three to two, he wants to go to the plate and take that last swing. And that's the type of competitor I want to lead my football team. And that last swing more times than not this year has been a home run for Chip Hillary. And there were his numbers in that first half. The lone negative mark against Chip in that first half was that interception he threw that Masters returned for the touchdown. You see his mom, we've been pointing her out in the plaid cap. He is uh, in the Big Brother Big Sister program. And Kevin, his little brother, uh, was sitting next to his mom. And his real brother is here as well. And they all wear... The jersey number 18. You don't think Kevin's a little excited? You know, mm. you're, you're the little brother of the starting quarterback for the local team. That's got to be exciting for that little 10-year-old kid. And mm -hmm. Nice to see a kid in college That's right. giving that much time up. A community guy, service, giving back to the community what is given to them by the fan support for the Kansas football team. Third and one, Hillary. That should be enough for the first down. He only needed about a half a yard. And it looks like from just our spot from up here that he got it by about a half a yard. Barta and Venables stopped him, and they're going to measure, but I think it's a first down. It looks like it is to me. And, and talking about Hillary, you know, so many things are pointed out, what's wrong with college football, what's wrong with college football players. And you see it in the pros a lot, too. A lot of negative things that uh, are said about players and, and, and programs and that. And I don't think enough positive sometimes comes out. And when you see Chip Hillary being a big brother to a young guy here in Lawrence, Kansas, I mean, that's got to uh, at least accentuate a little bit of the positive things that are going on. Because I think there are quite a few positive things going on in college football. And especially here. Yeah. And especially at Kansas State. And if you can find anything negative about this day, I'd like to know it because the weather is perfect. If you're a wild cat, circumstance is perfect. Well, yeah, you, you, you might uh, find some negatives there, but Kansas State, as you mentioned a couple of times, certainly not out of the water here as uh, Maurice Douglas takes it ahead for a couple of yards on first down down to the 41 yard line. They need a defensive stop here, though. They just give up one more first down. And and Kansas State still piling up the yardage, but they're not piling up the points, at least not yet. And Kansas State has to hold them from the scores. Second and eight. Come on. Come on. Douglas, nice cutback. And then ripped down from behind by Chris Patterson. Good play by the senior linebacker out of Miami, Florida. The man they call the hammer, and he put the hammer down there. Without Chris Patterson there, this ball, this run might go for big yardage. Watch the linebackers in the linemen. See how they're flowing? You see Brent Venables, and he just cuts back behind the flow. And luckily, 
Chris Patterson's there. He didn't get fooled, but you see all the linebackers and linemen going with the flow, and that's what creates cutback holes for backs, and Maurice Douglas took advantage of it there. Big third down play here for the defense of Kansas State. Barta coming on the blitz. Wide open is Chandler. Barta came on the blitz, and that left the tight end Chandler wide open in the middle of the field, and he goes down at the 15. They might have a face mask tacked onto the end. There's an obvious bust on the Kansas City or Kansas State uh, defense on this because Chandler is just so wide open. First down. You cannot expect that uh, somebody was supposed to be covering him and just made a physical mistake. You see Bardic getting a little bit of pressure there, but Chandler just so wide open. There's a bust there. They looked like they were playing a little bit of zone. I don't think they were in man-to-man, -man, but the safeties, either C.J. Masters or Jamie Mendez, has to be up covering Dwayne Chandler as he goes down the middle of the field. So now Kansas on that third and six play gets it down to the 14-yard line. Excuse me, down to the nine-yard line. The first and goal from the nine, and Hillary takes time out. So with 11.27 to go here in the third quarter, Hillary kind of hobbles off, trying to get his team into the end zone again. Kansas leading 17-7 with 11.27 to go here in the third quarter. First and goal for Kansas. And it seems like Kansas offensively is pushing the right buttons. With the exception of the interception by Masters, There, here comes Kansas State on the blitz with Barta coming in, and they make the right call to the tight end. Yeah, they certainly do. And, and Kansas State just out of sync, you know. Each team, whether you're offense or defense, is trying to get the other team out of sync. Defensively, you do it by a lot of stemming, which means faking the blitz, coming on blitzes, things like that. Offensively, you can do it by a couple trick plays, getting open receivers, and they have Kansas State out of sync right now. They're just overpowering the Kansas State Wildcats. Well, next week on our Prime Network Game of the Week, the Missouri Tigers will battle the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Sophomore running back Raphael Denson in last week's game at Texas Christian registered his best rush for the season as well as the Cowboys' longest pass for the year. Oklahoma State will be looking for even better marks as they host the Missouri Tigers next weekend in the Big 8 Game of the Week here on Prime. First and goal, here comes Douglas. Douglas hit down by Venables. And Douglas takes the ball down near the five-yard line. In fact, inside the five, down to the four. Second and goal from there. Douglas has run well today for KU. Pat Golden Rule said, of any of the backs that we tried to feature, if we were to feature one guy 25 times a game, it would be Douglas, and then he might be a guy that you see rushing for 100 yards per day. Douglas in motion, Cousins gets it, cuts back, touchdown, his second of the day! Penalty flag is down. Might be another face mask. They'll allow the touchdown, and they'll tack it on. It is against Kansas State. Touchdown stands, five-yard face mask on the defense. Touchdown is good. Kamani Cousins with his second touchdown of the day and his fourth of the year. And they're waving the Wheaton Lawrence. Same type of play that Kansas has scored on two different times already today. Now the third time, just a, a run inside the tackles. Cousins able to cut back behind the flow of the, the linebackers and defensive linemen. Gets into the end zone pretty easily. We'll watch the replay after the extra point. Klopp's extra point is good. Right through the extra stand. No one there got a chance to catch it. He kicked it over the stands. Take As a look, we look from at behind. Cousins. This is what Cousins sees. He sees, oh, it's all blacked up there. I'm going to cut back to the right. And a few people get a hand on him, but he's into the end zone easily. Mendez just didn't have the power to stand him up. Watch how the offensive linemen of Kansas are just overpowering the defense. Everybody's being blocked. There's nobody free. Jamie Mendez, the free safety, certainly not going to be blocked because the linemen don't count him. But it's it's too far into the uh, end zone. Hey, it's a touchdown already before Mendez gets him. And Mendez been down. Mendez is down after that point after. Mendez is shaken up. Now this would be the worst news of all for Kansas State. It's bad enough that Kansas is leading, but Mendez, one of their star defenders, is down on the field and obviously is uh, not in uh, 
good shape right now. You see Cousins, the smile on his face as he scores his second touchdown of the day, and Kansas leads 24 to 7. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. No one has money to burn, especially not today. Right after it was a year, the defroster thing went on it. The car was very good for the first 40 or 50,000 miles, and since then, I've, I've really had a lot of trouble. That's where Consumer Reports comes in. It can save you hundreds or thousands of dollars on stereo systems, microwave ovens, or minivans. Hi, I'm Bob Knoll, head of auto testing for Consumer Reports, the magazine that works for you. We can show you how you could save $2,000 or more on car insurance, how you could save $3,000 next time you buy a new car. It's one of the very few objective sources of information you can get. Everybody needs an, an edge. Call now for your trial issue of Consumer Reports. If you like it, you'll get 12 more issues, including the 1993 buying guide, all for just $22. Or write cancel on the bill, return it, and owe nothing. You'll also get the 1992 buying guide free with your paid subscription. So call for your trial issue now. Call 1-800-652-2112. Defending national champ, number one in the poll, the Purple Steamroller has flattened 19 in a row. The Huskies now howl for death. Washington and Oregon, live Saturday at 6.30 on Sunshine. Take a look at Mendez, still being worked on by the trainers. He walked off, though, under his own power and appears to be okay. That's always a good sign when you football players walk off under your own power. Hey, a, a loss of a Jamie Mendez could be critical for Kansas State. He makes up for a lot of mistakes in that defensive backfield. Eichloff quits goofing around with it and just says, let's just kick it out of here. Boy, that was 10 yards beyond the end zone. <laughs> That's Mason a way to do it. it. Mason loves it. He really likes that Eichloff kid, and why not? You see the drive for Kansas, under three minutes, 53 yards again. We emphasize that great field position for KU. That's been their advantage the whole game long, at least through the uh, first half and the few minutes here we've played in the second half. Here comes Smar Gesso again, still looking for Kansas State's first first down. Gallon giving some room to run finally and cuts it back. And a first down for Kansas State. First time I've said that today. <laughs> and the K-State crowd is celebrating. And the Kansas players are saying, we wanted a shutout, not in points, but first downs. Man. You see that the K-State guys finally get some Kansas players on the ground, opens up a nice hole for Eric Gallon as he goes around the left side. But a couple of the Kansas defenders were finally on the ground, not able to make the play. And that gives Gallon eight yards rushing on the day and eight carries. Margesso, goodbye. This time it's Gilbert Brown. Take your pick. They're all in there. Gilbert Brown with his second sack of the day. And now they're making bets with each other. Who's going to get there first? I'll bet you by the end of the day, I have more sacks than you. But watch Smart Jesser. <laughs> all right, his receivers right now, if you're a receiver, you haven't even turned around to look for the pass yet, and Smart Jesso is down on the ground. I mean, there's nothing that he can do about it. The receiver's going, turning around, and the play is already over. They're saying, what's going on back there? Another sack by KU. That's officially, I guess, there's six. I thought it was their seven. That time he's given time, and he gets it off to Benton. Benton gets it up to the 26-yard line, but it's still going to bring up third and very long, third and 15 for Kansas State. Smart just which is backpedaling out of there. I think he's trying to view the field as he goes out. He doesn't want to have to fake it there anybody. He wants to look as soon as the ball is snapped, because if I find somebody open, I better go to him right now. I'm going to hit it. Hopefully they can break something and get it going. Do you try a quicker drop? Do you go back deeper? You have to try a quicker drop. You have to just go two, three, four, five steps. Don't go to the seven-step drop. Third and 15. Field more. They're all celebrating. Guy Howard's in there as well. 
What a performance by KU. And it's a jailbreak. Name them all. Look at Stubblefield. He gets just bumped, but not much more than that. Barrett Brooks doesn't get a whole lot on Dana Stubblefield. You've got to get in front of him. Can't just expect the blocker by kicking him, uh, just bumping him to the side. Snyder almost had it blocked. Fair catch by Bowen inside Kansas State territory. Kansas with excellent field position again at the 47 of KSU. Smart Jesso, what's he saying to his coach right now? <laughs> He's saying, Coach, uh, Help. sure you don't want to go to somebody else right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back out there, but uh, have somebody ready. My goodness. You really get to the point where you kind of feel sorry for him. Every yeah. time he goes back, he's getting nailed. And Hillary brings his team out of the huddle again. First and ten. Penalty flag goes down. In fact, the whistle the play dead before it gets going. Tight end for Kate. Kansas might have jumped. Ball start. Offense. Repeat first down. You called it. So it'll be first and 15 now. Yeah, Glenn Mason. Uh, how about, things go his way. So how about yesterday? Today. He was saying college football. You gotta love oh, it. And yeah. He's a. It, it's he just an pumped. excitable guy to talk to. Mm -hmm. and he just loves the game. And Saturday afternoons. And he's the kind of coach that uh, a lot of people like to play for because he's uh, just so enthusiastic about it. And I think that it's really carried over to his players. And they're happy to play football. It's fun to play football for this guy. Douglas gets across the 50 down to the 49. You're talking about Mason. I asked him yesterday about his gambler image that he has here at KU going for it on fourth down a lot. And he kind of looked at me and said, you know, I never thought of myself as a gambler. I certainly didn't learn it from my coach, Woody Hayes. <laughs> he said Woody would be kicking him in the oh. butt if, it, <laughs> if he saw him doing some of the things he's been doing here at Kansas. He says, I'm not really a gambler. I just want to win. Mm -hmm. And if, a, if, if yep. faking a punt is going to help me win, then I'm going to try to do it. He said, I never thought of it as gambling. I just, he said, hey. You got a winner, you got a loser. That's why we keep scoring. I'm just trying to win the game. Hillary's going to help him because Hillary finds Matt Gay wide open at the 35 for a first down. Chip Hillary on target in this game. He's got a receiver wide open, but the throw hits the Gay right on the five of his jersey, right in the chest. And you got to be impressed with the arm strength of Hillary that he's displaying today. He throws those intermediate short patterns very well. The knock on Hillary is the long ball. And we haven't seen him complete a long pass today. And it is to Cousins. Big hole. And Cousins earns about five more on his own. Inside the 25, all the way down to the 22-yard line before Barta and Rawlings could haul him down. Conversely, the Kansas offensive line is opening up some big holes for the running backs. They sure are. Another trap play. John Jones pulling out, kicking out the defensive end creates a big hole for Cousins. And they are mixing up the block. He's not just straight ahead overpowering. They're doing some trapping. Douglas stays on his feet and hauled down from behind. Barta is in on the tackle, but Masters is the one that really pulled him down at the 20. A little credit to C.J. Masters. He's created a fumble. Picked off a pass and gone 80 yards. One of the bright spots for KSU's defense, and there's not too many. Bright spots, that is. Yeah, 6.43 to go here in the third quarter. That's what, oh my. That's almost like a shutout, isn't it? That's like the Braves and the Pirates in the first two games of their series. Maurice Douglas again on the carry down to the 17 yard line. Jody Killian stops him there. And uh, Kansas needs to get it down to the 13 yard line for the first down. I expected this to be a close game, but as you look at it, you almost can't blame Kansas for coming out as fired up and as ready. They've had a 16 day layoff. They haven't played since a week ago Thursday in the Thursday night game against Cal. Okay. That's a first down and more to the seven yard line. Tom Byers sacks him there. We can look at an isolation of Gay. I think he just go, he's going to go down the field, hook up in the flat area, goes toward the sidelines. The ball is there, and it's good timing. You see, right as Gay makes his cut, he only takes one or two steps, and the ball is delivered on time. And, uh, KU offense is in sync in all phases. Five catches already today for Gay. We had 12 coming into this game for the year. 
Cousins. He's the workhorse when it gets close to the goal line and takes it down to the four yard line. Daryl Harbert stops him there and the wind starting to kick up here just a little bit at Memorial Stadium. Picking up on that point about a 16 day layoff. Not only was it a layoff, but they had a heartbreaking loss. They were excited about playing on Monday night, foot, or not Monday night, Thursday night football, <laughs> a national TV game and that, and, and they didn't feel like they had a lot of time to prepare to the KU coaches. No. Only three days to really prepare to play Cal on that Thursday night. Well, now they had a nice long layoff. You get the bumps and bruises healed up, and now they're, uh, they're, they came out fired up and ready to play. You, you, you might have expected that from Kansas in this game. Looks like Williams is shaken up again. He was uh, somewhat injured in that first half, and looks like he's shaken up again here in the second half. Yeah, you know, Cal was given uh, a week off before that Thursday night game, and they were asking Mason if you would play a Thursday night game again, and he said, well, I, I would, given equal terms. Right. We didn't have the Saturday off before. They tried to get their game with Tulsa changed. They had it set with Tulsa, but then Tulsa couldn't get out of a commitment with Southern Mississippi because Southern Mississippi was worried about rescheduling the game and worried about duck season down in Mississippi. Well, duck season. So, so the Jayhawks were hurt by the Ducks. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go down to the field and Duke Fry. Well, Tony Williams just walked off on, on off of the field with a little help. The injury again to his knee. Mendez is on the sideline. Simino has not played here in the second half. A lot of defensive problems. And Douglas takes it down to the goal line. Byer stops him just shy of the goal line. Douglas looking for his second rushing touchdown of the day. Douglas, the second leading scorer in the Big 8 conference. The first is Dan Eikloff, his teammate. Another running play, this time from the two-back set. Douglas is hit near the line of scrimmage, but a lot of a good effort to get down to the one-yard line. Hillary, uh, he's got it in, but there's a flag down. Might have been some early movement by KU. One thing we should dead ball, illegal procedure, snap infraction, repeat third down, five-yard down. A snap infraction. <laughs> How do you attract a snap? The, uh, <laughs> they did. What Kansas has been doing quite a bit is going on quick counts. They want to get up to the line of scrimmage. They don't want Kansas State to be able to jump around into deep, different defenses and have Hillary have to check off a lot. Those, they're just going to go up and say, this is the play we're running, and, and we've got a way to block it against just about any defense you throw at us, so we're going to go on a quick count right now. Boom. Kansas again, uh, chewing up some clock here. Again with that great field position. Now third and goal from the six. And the draw play, Douglas, touchdown! Wow! Waving some more wheat here in Lawrence. Maurice Douglas with his second touchdown run of the day and his eighth of the year. Douglas now nearing 100 yards rushing of the day has 97. High claw, that's good. And we'll look at a replay of it, you'll see once again, nice draw play. You'll see Hesley Hempstead lead right through the hole and makes a nice block on Venables to get Maurice Douglas through, and that was the key. The other linemen just are there to hold their blocks. Roll your defensive player any way you can, and then Hesley Hempstead, and how would you like to see him coming at you? 6'1", 287, and he just overpowers the outmanned Brent Venables. Maurice Douglas finds the end zone for the second time. And Kansas now dominating Kansas State with 4.22 to go here in the third quarter. It's Kansas 31, Kansas State 7. Hey, Magic fans, slam your way into a new season with stuff from the Orlando Magic and a super souvenir value. Celebrate the new season with some neat stuff from Stuff and His Friends. For $19.95 plus handling, you can collect a stuffed doll and an official embroidered Magic cap or a cap and a T-shirt in either black or white, all for under $20. Call 1-800-762-7900 or write to Sunshine Network and tip off the new season with a super Magic souvenir. How can you change a child's life as easily as you can fill an empty glass? Around our world, 
children's lives are empty. Little children are struggling every day with hunger. All they need is some nourishing food. Little children are suffering and dying each day from sickness. All they need is the chance to see a doctor. Little children are growing up trapped in hopeless poverty, just like the poverty that still traps their parents. What they need is the opportunity to go to school. When you become a Child Reach sponsor, you help fill a needy child's life, not with handouts, but with self-help programs that change the child's and the family's future. In return, you find your own life a little fuller, too. Please call for details on how you can help. Right now, a child needs a heart like yours, filled to the brim with love. Welcome back to the Big 8 Game of the Week on Prime Network. Because of time constraints, we must move ahead in the contest. When we return, we'll have more Big 8 action here on Prime Network. The conflict. The elation. The determination. The anguish. It's comedy and seriousness. It's a smile and a tear for the victory and to the defeated. It's competition at its best on your source for sports, Prime Network. Hello there, everybody. This is Mel Allen. I've got a special offer on out-of-print collector baseball cards. Now you can own 200 genuine collectible baseball cards for the unbelievable price of $9.95. It's a collector's dream come true. Each set contains baseball cards going as far back as 1986 and including Topps, Don Russ, and Upper Deck that are no longer being printed. Over the years, the value of baseball cards has skyrocketed, and while no one can guarantee baseball cards will go up in value, we can guarantee each set will have star, superstar, rookie, and all-star cards. So take it from me, Mel Allen, at this price, these cards could be going, going, gone. 200 genuine collectible baseball cards, no duplicates, mint condition, only $9.95 each, plus $2.95 postage, limited five per household. So get cracking. Call now to order. Hey, Magic fans, slam your way into a new season with stuff from the Orlando Magic and a super souvenir value. Celebrate the new season with some neat stuff from Stuff and His Friends. For $19.95 plus handling, you can collect a stuffed doll and an official embroidered Magic cap or a cap and a T-shirt in either black or white, all for under $20. Bucks. Call 1-800-762-7900 or write to Sunshine Network and tip off the new season with a super Magic souvenir. Prime Network, trying to present our Big 8 Game of the Week today. We're on the campus of the University of Kansas in Lawrence. Trees starting to change color after the cold front went through earlier this week. Just gorgeous. What a great Saturday afternoon. Kansas celebrating right now. Leading 31-7. Looks like we might have a quarterback change for Kansas State as Matt Garber is warming up on the Wildcat sideline. Well, we talked about uh, maybe even at halftime the possibility of going to a new quarterback, and it, you really can't lay a lot of the blame at the feet of Jason Smart-Jessel. He just that has not had time to get rid of the football, as evidenced by that last interception he threw. He's under tremendous pressure. First down for Kansas at their own 33-yard line. George White picks up just a couple on first down up to the... 34. Kansas has come together as a team in this game, playing a complete game both offensively and defensively. The coaches, Dave, said a little bit about that national TV game. There's a little hot dogging going on, a little uh, individual play and not all the team play that they'd like to see. Second down and a long eight, and a good play there by a Quincy Griffith as he stops George White in the backfield. Let's get down to Duke Fry. 
Well, David, it would appear that Matt Garber is going to come in on the next possession to replace Margesso at quarterback for Kansas State. I'm going to be over on the KU side a moment ago. You were talking about those K-State T-shirts, the 16-12 T-shirts that KU was wearing in practice sessions. Well, Chris Mamalanga has taken his, cut it up, and he's wearing it as a headband over there, so he's got a reminder on every play. And you can uh, sense right now in Manhattan they're starting to get the blue T-shirts ready with the, the final score of this game for next year. Kansas State will take a timeout with under 14 minutes to go. 13.58 left in this one, and it's Kansas 31, Kansas State 7. As a truck company for 90 years, we understand the value of a strong frame, a reassuring strength for towing, whether you're on road or GMC Truck, the strength of experience. No one has money to burn, especially not today. Right after it was a year, the defroster thing went on it. The car was very good for the first 40 or 50,000 miles, and since then, I've ever really had a lot of trouble. That's where Consumer Reports comes in. It can save you hundreds or thousands of dollars on stereo systems, microwave ovens, or minivans. Hi, I'm Bob Knoll. Head of Auto Testing for Consumer Reports, the magazine that works for you. We can show you how you could save $2,000 or more on car insurance, how you could save $3,000 next time you buy a new car. It's one of the very few objective sources of information you can get. Everybody needs an, an edge. Call now for your trial issue of Consumer Reports. If you like it, you'll get 12 more issues, including the 1993 buying guide, all for just $22. Or write cancel on the bill, return it, and owe nothing. You'll also get the 1992 buying guide free with your paid subscription. So call for your trial issue now. Call 1-800-522-5333. There's a look at uh, that purple shirt that's been ripped up that Duke Fry referred to. A purple shirt that Mo Malonga is wearing as headwear today. That's some hairdo, too, isn't it? <laughs> you got to like that. <laughs> <laughs> see, he's got this helmet on. You don't see that hairdo. If you saw him coming at you with the size and quickness of this guy and a hairdo like that, he'd be running the other hey, way. Right now, Mo Malonga, you can wear it any way you want, pal. It's all right with me. Parents are Tungan. You know where Tunga is? Uh, Pacific Island, isn't it? There you go. Oh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up. <laughs> we read the same article, I think. I think so. <laughs> yeah, fourth down upcoming now. I think Kansas there is saying, all right, it's third and 11. Let's not throw this one up for grabs. Let's not do anything silly. Let's keep that clock moving. Clock is our friend right now. Benton goes back at his own 25, waiting to punt of Dan Eichloff. And for Eichloff, this is just his second punt of the day. I'll give you another indication of how dominant Kansas has been. First one was 50. This one a little bit off the side of his foot. Benton has it at the 30 and hit right at the 30. Great coverage by KU. Hassan Bailey was the first one down there. And why not? Bailey, who was third in the Big 8 in the 200-meter indoors when he was a freshman. What impresses me about Glenn Mason, he's not afraid to use the starting players on special teams. Hassan Bailey, and why not? Look how fast he is. I mean, runs a sub-4, 5, 40. He's down quickly on special teams. We don't have a change in quarterbacks. Margesso stays in for Kansas State. I guess he begged Bill Snyder, and he said no. <laughs> First and ten, Kansas State. Ball their own 30 yard line. Barber refused to quit. J.J. Smith now in at tailback. Well, Kansas uh, getting off to a great start. You see for Kansas State, their offense has been woeful. C.J. Masters, the lone bright spot for the Wildcats, that 80-yard interception return and Kansas State has had their quarterback sack seven times Kansas you know the first downs Douglas and Cousins with a couple of touchdowns each smart Jesso finds Benton looking for that first down marker I think he's got it at the 41 Kansas State going without a huddle and why not you've got a score 
four touchdowns to think about winning. 12.41 to go in the half. Actually, they'll huddle now with the clock stop. But Jim, last year, Kansas State, when they had to come from behind to beat Kansas, they were down 12-3 going into the fourth quarter. They had 13 first downs in that first quarter, or in that fourth quarter. 13 in one quarter. They've staged furious rallies the two years before that and came up a little bit short against KU. So each of the last three years, they've tried to rally in the fourth quarter. Two have been successful, one is not. And they need four scores here, and it's going to be tough to get it with guys like Sylvester Wright in the backfield. All right, who's going to get there first? Me? No, you. See, they're taking too long a drop. They've got to go with shorter patterns. It's taking too long for those patterns to develop, and a guy like Sylvester Wright getting into the act, just overpowering the right tackle for the sack. Eight sacks. Here comes Bailey. Make it nine. Field, Bailey, Sylvester Wright. They're having a party at the quarterback. I'll meet you there. See the isolated camera on Sylvester Wright, but the pressure comes from the other side as Hassan Bailey and Larry Field get in on the action, too. That was the sack before. Now, third and 24. Margesso dumps it off. And J.J. Smith with room to run up to the 40-yard line. Flag comes down. That's 11 yards shy of where they needed to go for the first down as Bailey and Vaughn wrap up Smith. Kansas has got to try to take advantage. Kansas State has to take advantage as we look at the penalty. It's going to be a clip has to try to take advantage of what Kansas is going to give them. Their defensive backs are going to be playing loose. They just don't want any big home run balls thrown over their head, make them look bad at this point in the game. So they've got to go with the short drops and the short patterns and see if they can't at least get a drive, some kind of sustained drive down the field and maybe at least get an offensive touchdown on the, on the board. And a long afternoon for that man, Bill Snyder. Next week, uh, Kansas State goes out of conference to play at Utah State. As Snyder's son, Sean, comes in to punt again. He punts is this now for Sean Snyder. Sean Snyder today has already punted it eight times. This is ninth. Bowen back at his own 18-yard line waiting for it. Sean Snyder has done a tremendous job of punting the football, and that is tremendous kick. Out of bounds at the five, make it the six yard line. What a boot by Sean Snyder. If Kansas. there were a player of the game for Kansas State, he might be it. I was just going to say, when they convene tomorrow to look at the film and, and perhaps they choose a player of the game, win or lose, it's going to be Sean Snyder for K State and the Wildcats. That one 54 yards and out of bounds. So with a timeout on the field and 11.09 to go in this one, Kansas leads 31 to 7. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. Hey, watch out! Uh-oh! Are nicks and scratches destroying your car's finish? Introducing Color Smart, the color-coordinated polish that makes nicks and scratches disappear. Look, to shine your shoes, you choose matching color polish. Color Smart works the same way. Just choose the color that matches your car. Not a car key! Use Color Smart White and those scratches disappear. Color Smart brings back any car's shine. Amazing! Don't spend hundreds on a new paint job. Now you can order Color Smart, the intelligent car polish, for only $19.95. Order now, and we'll double the size of your bottle at incredible 16 ounces. But wait, call within the next 10 minutes, and we'll also include this triple bonus. Restore it, clear glass, and new car scent. A $20 value free. Order your Color Smart today. Have your credit card ready and call 1-800-652-2112 or send check or money order to the address on your screen. For faster delivery, call 1-800-652-2112. 
The Winston Cup Series is off this week, but we'll be with you Thursday evening. This week in NASCAR will come your way from Birmingham, Alabama. Hope you can join us this Thursday night. Live Thursday night at 11 on Sunshine Network. Welcome back to Prime Network. Because of time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage. Plastic grocery bags from Goodings. Just think what you could be saving. Help keep Florida green. Recycle your plastic bags at Goodings. goes on offense looking to use the clock as much as they possibly can trying to wind this thing down and wrap up in another governor's cup Kansas Jayhawks have had a great deal of success against Kansas State especially here in Lawrence Kansas State hasn't won in Lawrence since 1969 that's the first year that they started awarding the governor's cup and Glenn Mason three and one coming into this game against Kansas State looks like he's going to four and one Kansas has won 15 of the 23 Governor's Cups. And Chaka Johnson, not much room to run for him. Maurice Douglas ran well for Kansas today. Chip Hillary did a good job offensively in guiding the offense. Didn't have to run a lot, Hillary, today, but he did a good job of throwing the ball with that one mistake to C.J. Masters. Did a great job in guiding the offense, but defense is where Kansas won this game today. Time of possession, uh, heavily in favor of KU. And they've had the field position battle won. First down battle, a huge advantage for the Jayhawks. Almost picked off in the backfield. Randolph was back there defensively. And Thomas throws it incomplete. Glenn Mason still trying to make first downs. He's not really conceding that we're going to run out the clock. He wants to keep that just seven points on the board for Kansas State. And I think he wants to keep his defensive and offensive statistics in place. Eichloff from the goal line. Benton is back near the 50. Single for the fair catch or not, the covering team has to give him at least two yards to catch the ball. It didn't look like they gave Benton the room. They didn't give him two inches. Fair catch fair interference catch. on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. It First was down. a fair catch. Let's let's watch him and see. I never saw a fair catch. See, you know, he, no. he never signaled for a fair catch. But regardless. You got to give him room. You got to give him room. And I'm, I'm looking. They actually let him catch the ball. They did not touch him before the ball was caught. But you have to give him more than just a few inches. You've got to give him two yards. 
Look at that. 24 to 6 in first downs. That's domination. Garber again, the quick hitter to the outside. Henry Smalls with his first catch as a Wildcat. And when this game's over, you know, Garber's statistics are going to look fairly good. He's throwing the ball very well and that. You can say, well, why didn't they go to him earlier? But I think at the time that they're playing, I mean, you can call it garbage time or whatever. You know, Kansas has a lot of their second-line players in. They're just going to allow Kansas State to, to catch short passes and not give up a home run ball. And, and Garber's taking advantage of that. Under four minutes to go, as you see. Down Touchdown. the middle. Oh, just out of the outstretched arms of Gerald Benton. It's a third straight time that Kansas State was that close to the end zone. Well, Garber's had a few players open for touchdowns. This time, Benton goes to the post. Garber, get, he has time there. He's got his feet set. He's not under pressure. Just overthrows the ball, and he's going to be kicking himself about that one. Looks like the wind pushed it a little bit away, too. Second and ten. The wind was blowing in the direction of uh, pushing the ball away from Benton. Garber. Nice run here. Trying to get out of bounds to stop the clock. He does. And a flag comes down. Might be a personal foul tacked on. Inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line goes Garber. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, Mason's got a huge monkey off his back with this win. There's a look at it. There's, there's the hit out of bounds. Well, I don't see it. <laughs> I guess they say he was down and maybe he went in with his headgear, but to me that doesn't look like a personal foul. See, right there, he's still in bounds. Where's a personal foul? And Dick Holt came in, according to the official, a little bit late. So it is a first down for Kansas State at the 14-yard line. Mason, who had a year to stew about this one. Last year, losing 16-12 to Kansas State. But, uh, that wildcat, that monkey, that gorilla is off his back. And Kansas will go to 4-1 and 1-0 one and one and oh in the Big 8 Conference. And I think they have a chance to knock somebody off. I really do, whether it's Oklahoma or Colorado or Nebraska. They have two of those three games at home. Oklahoma mm -hmm. and Colorado will be right here in March. So, I mean, this is a team that looks like they have a chance to knock one of those big boys off the top uh, physically you, you've got to say they've got the talent is, it, is it a mental anybody. game is it a mental game for i them think it bit? is i think there's a little bit of mental uh toughness that they have to accrue before those games and say i we can do this and you have to believe in yourself and you know that's a big hurdle to overcome to think whoa colorado nebraska oklahoma teams that are perennially ranked in the top 10 you know can we beat a team like that a win like this over a rival like kansas state will give them a little bit of confidence that they can i think no one in the backfield, obvious pass play. Garber throwing it up into the corner of the end zone, too far. And again, we have a penalty flag down. Might be a hold against Kansas State on that offensive line. It is. Well, Jim, you pointed it out early that, that probably the key of the game for Kansas State, especially offensively, was their offensive line play. And with all the quarterback sacks they gave up, you would have to say they didn't get the job done there. No, they certainly didn't. That uh, They needed to get the job done there. But how can you fault them if we're playing it against guys like Dana Stubblefield and Chris Mamalanga and Gilbert Brown? Those three in particular, uh, along with Kyle Moore, Sylvester Wright, I think they all had sacks. But, yeah. I mean, that's just an outstanding. I am very impressed with this Kansas front seven. So is Kansas State. Fourth and ten. Almost another sack, but Garber gets out of it. Then tosses it up into the end zone again too far. And Kansas will take over on downs. <laughs> you see Mike Steele walking off. He's the guy who had Garber in the backfield, and Garber was just used an athletic move, was able to duck him. Steele went right over the top. And it looks like Bowen is down in the end zone for Kansas. Charlie Bowen, who was slightly hobbled earlier, came back in the game and now is down again. 
the coaching staff at KU might be kicking themselves a little bit after this game. Say, well, why do you have Charlie Bowen in the game at this point? Ahead, 31 to 7, less than four minutes to go, and a player that had already come off with a slight injury earlier. Well, Bowen is being helped up by the trainers of Kansas, and so with 3:21. We'll check on his progress in just a moment with Kansas leading 31 to 7. Another day in the trenches got you down, been kicked around. There you see uh, Charlie Bowen being helped off the field. We certainly hope uh, for his yeah. sake and for KU's sake that uh, it's nothing serious. That wouldn't hurt them. They're his backup is a true freshman, Keith Rogers. First and 10, Kansas with 321 remaining. Kansas putting the finishing touches on this one. As Thomas with the naked bootleg gets it out of bounds at the 23 yard line. Let <laughs> Mason say, stay in bounds, son. We don't, we don't need to stop the clock. Mason just wants to see that clock move. He wants to, be able to take that purple shirt off and throw it away. I don't think even he envisioned the type of ball game we're seeing that he would be able to totally dominate Bill Snyder's club. Nice thing about their big win over Tulsa, that 40 to 7 victory over TU. And so were you shocked? TU doesn't have the record this year, but certainly a really good football team. I said shocked. I mean, he almost fell over. He says, I was so surprised that we dominated that game that I, I couldn't tell you how surprised I was. As we see the replay of LT Levine, the true freshman, he's trying to get a couple carries, get a couple of uh, stats on his side. Not much going there. One of the few times that K-State has uh, swarmed on defense. First and 10 at the 26-yard line. Levine again. Oh, some good moves. Breaks it outside, gets it up in the 30-yard line. Chris Sublet stops him there. Levine's a guy you might hear from in the next couple of years. He's a true freshman. They're high on him. Uh, they're giving him the ball here and uh, some meaningless playing time, but he wants to get his stats, uh, you know, built up a little bit. But they want to take a look at, you know, in game-like conditions, what a guy can do, and moves like that are going to get him even more playing time. And you say uh, meaningless. It depends on your perspective. For him, it's not meaningless. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, for him, he's like, this is uh, the Super Bowl. He, he wants <laughs> to show the coaches that, look, you know, you, you don't have to just run me when the score is 31 to 7. You can run me when it's a tight ball game. Kansas State was offside. The penalty uh, was taken by KU. It's first and five now. And you see that's the time remaining in this one. Kansas with touchdowns for Monty Cousins and Maurice Douglas. They each had two. And a strong defense dominates K-State today. Line again. Good hard, short of the first down at the 34 35 yard line. Levine, a six foot, 195 pounder out of New Jersey. You know, we were talking about Kansas and the fact that they might be able to get a breakthrough win against, you know, the top ranked with Nebraska, Colorado's, Oklahoma's, those type of, uh, of teams. On the other hand, Kansas State's going to have a much tougher go of it. Matter of fact, all three of the games against those opponents, they are at Colorado, at Oklahoma, and they played Nebraska the last game of the season in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. So none of their, their games will be at home. Second and one. Thomas wants to throw. Goes long distance. It's way too far. He was looking for Dwayne Chandler, but it went too far. Speaking of that game in Tokyo, just to give you an indication of how detail-oriented Bill Snyder is, before he signed the contract, he wanted to make sure that his players didn't have to sit on the side of the plane on the way to Tokyo that was in the sun. He wanted to make sure that they didn't have the sun next to them all the way to Tokyo. So before the contract was signed, because... Kansas State and Nebraska will fly on the same plane. He wanted to make sure that his team was on the other side of the plane. 
Osborne relented and said, okay, we'll do that. Attention to detail. And well, then on the other side, Glenn Mason's a guy, we just go out and play. Yeah. You know, he did, it's not that he doesn't you know, give some attention to detail, but I was asking him a few things. Well, are you worried about this? Are you worried about the guys being a little too fired up? They have had 16 days off, you know. Maybe they'll come out the, a little too excited. No, no, we just go out and play. That's, I mean, that's, that's why we, you know, <laughs> run onto the field. You want to play football? Yeah. You know, did, did, did you see that uh, Kansas State, Kansas, excuse me, on that uh, play before this last one, went deep. And uh, I wonder if Bill Schneider can't appreciate that and trying to score a touchdown with under two minutes to go. Mm -hmm. Might be for KU. I don't get the sense they're trying to rub anything in because I know the I would be respect that Mason has for Schneider and the program at Kansas State. Hey, they know what each has gone through in trying to rebuild their program. I think it's a case of trying to get a sophomore quarterback exactly. a chance to, you know, throw the ball deep a little bit. And maybe that wasn't his primary receiver. He wanted to hit a home run, and, and Glenn Mason just got to calm him down and say, look, we got this ball game run. And Mason won't have to take a shower now. Got the ice bucket over the back. Yow. Yeah, Mason can smile about that. You think they ever did that to his coach, Woody Hayes? I don't think so. You think uh, Woody ever got the ice bucket over his shoulder? Actually, it pains me every time <laughs> I see that. You know why? You know who made that popular? The New York Giants, I believe, in 1986 when they went to the Super Bowl. That's right. Super Bowl, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Against uh, what team? I forget. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. I bet you do. <laughs> That's going to do it here. Congratulations to the Kansas Jayhawks, the winners of the Governor's Cup again. That's the end of the final score. Kansas 31, Kansas 27. Well, the coaches congratulating each other. Snyder saying, you guys just too tough for us today. Kansas using an imposing defense and stopping Kansas State. Kansas State wound up with eight first downs, but they came into that fourth quarter with just two first downs, none in the first half. And Kansas dominates this game. The lone touchdown they gave up was the 80-yard interception from C.J. Masters. So the Kansas defense did shut out Kansas State. Wildcats get that seven points from Masters on the interception. And Mason to the victor go the spoils. Mason being carried off here at Memorial Stadium. Trying to get down, I think. <laughs> That's what a rivalry is all about. You think they'd call, uh, carry him off if they uh, had just beaten Iowa State or somebody? No, when you beat Kansas State, then you carry the coach off. So Kansas with a big win over Kansas State to go to 4-1, 31-7 the final here in Lawrence.